to success. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to your favorite podcast, the Ain't Shit Show, the home of booze, booze, and booze views and unpopular opinions. I want to thank you all for boobs. joining us. <laughs> and boobs. Thank you for joining us for episode one thirty. Yeah, where the boobs is at? My name is Fresh, and I'm one half of the pod gods, and with me is the best man in all the podcast land, boob and enthusi- enthusiast, Mister BL. What up? What up? Hola. Fuck is good. Hope y'all doing all right. Happy election day. We're recording this on a Tuesday. Are you ready for the season finale of America P? Yeah, man. Well, I mean, it ain't quite there. This is like, this is like the final steps. Like when you get to, it's like the, the second to the last man. When you <laughs> on the game. Or some shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Right before you get the King Cooper. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. baby, it's like baby Cooper. The shit that you gotta beat. He got mad lives. Yeah, because it's not going to be uh, an easy exchange of power, a no. peaceful exchange of power, um, no. if this goes the way that I want it to go. Did you vote early? No, I voted today. Oh, you voted today? How was that experience? It was In and out? Yeah, took no time. No time at all. I mean, it's never, like, I always vote on the day of, like, I've never voted early and shit. Um, for some reason, I just don't do it. And um, I never really had to wait in line. I've never had to wait in line at the polls ever. Not that I can remember anyway. Oh, I definitely had to wait in line last election, last presidential election. I had to come to North Carolina because I was not registered um, to vote in Georgia. And I had to go to North Carolina and vote. And I voted on the day of the election. The line was long as fuck. And the Republicans was out that bitch and it proved by way of the results of the election that they were out that bitch <laughs> well uh i was actually just looking where did you vote in durham or where'd you vote what's I, I i voted in wake i i voted in Kerry. oh yeah well actually um la- i mean that that didn't really happen he won they won wake county last year and they won wake county this year um they, yeah they did they i was happy but it was it was red out there when i went like it was very, you know, it, I feel what, like what County right now. I don't know. If they, I can't. And they won it last. Um, Hillary won it last time. She, they won Durham and Wake County because it's yep. predominantly like, you know, diverse and yeah. college educated. And, you know, what I mean, it's a triangle in Wake County and shit. So they were just talking about it right before we um, started recording and shit. So we'll see. You know what's interesting, though, about that whole education piece, because North Carolina And these stats that I'm giving may be old, but I know when I was in North Carolina, um, North Carolina had the highest percentage of educated individuals with degrees. And I'm sure that correlates with the fact that North Carolina has the biggest collegiate system in the United States. Yeah, well, we got the most HBCUs in the state, just that alone, right? So I would imagine, I don't know where we rank in terms of like the amount of colleges per capita, but I think we, I know for a fact that we have the most HBCUs, but um, yeah, but what's fucking colleges in fucking North Carolina. So what's interesting about that is that once you, I, I would think that more education would equate to more knowledge, which would equate to why would you vote for this dummy? <laughs> but, you know, well, even that. So so in Charlotte, I mean, in the major cities, though, so like North Carolina is a weird state because it's like it's very um, rural. Well, but the cities well, no, no. are so city, diverse. It's very, it's very um, illusioned. I guess if you will, because mm. like, if you go to Raleigh, Charlotte, Durham, like the major cities, Greensboro is somewhat kind of country still, but it's like, you know, somewhat uh, more thriving. Obviously, Charlotte is what Charlotte is. But outside of that, like North Carolina is ruled in a bitch. Like it's fucking country as shit. Like, and, it, it, and you'll be disillusioned if you come to those major cities and like, oh, shit is da da da. But yeah. And Wake County to the, I think it's to the east of us, like to the southeast, the next county over is fucking 
uh, like Johnston County. And Johnston County is like fucking a glimpse into the 1960s. <laughs> West like, bubble fuck. For real, because I had a claim. You know, I do claims and shit. And um, it wasn't my particular claim, but it was one that I was working on. And long story short, it was uh, a dude from PA. He he rear-ended um, this lady and killed her. And she had she was Afro. She was like from Africa. Like she was, you know what I mean? Like from Nigeria or some shit. I don't know why the fuck she was in Johnston County. But I think she was driving to Florida, as a matter of fact. So anyway, big, big rig ended up rear um mm. and she passed away, unfortunately. Um, oh, rest in peace. She had that two lady. kids who uh, were of African descent or, you know, of African um, bloodline. And so they were in Johnston County. So um, we ended up hiring an attorney on the ship and the attorney was like, we need to we need to find those kids because and she's a white lady, like from I think from Raleigh and shit and uh, or oh, she wow. works in Raleigh. And she was like, we got to find those kids because. She was talking to the insured and I was just on the phone. She was like, cause Johnston County, like they not having a mom, not really. We having no relatives or anything like that, that we can, you know, readily contact right away. We need to find those kids because, and we need to get them back to wherever they came from. Like, because Johnston County is a, a oh, a, a, a fucking place that she, and she said it like she was like Johnston County is a place that mirrors, you know, the 1960s and not progressive at all. Like it's a total difference from. So what you are saying is they'll be harmed. Potentially. It, I mean, it, yeah, potentially harmed I mean, in Johnston County because they're not it, having I mean, it. Yeah. It's just it's like I was I was planning on buying a house and shit out there like when I bought this house and um, like it's just mullets and fucking Confederate flags. It's just a different type of it's just it's just country. So I, I, in saying all that, like North Carolina is a deceptive state because like when I went to I took my kids to the zoo not too long ago and you had to go through like Asheboro, like I was telling, I think I said on the podcast, but it was Trump size yeah. fucking galore. You know what I mean? And it, it to the point where it was like uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like I wish I'd have my pistol with me. You know what I'm saying? Because my luck, we would have fucking, you know, got a flat tire and we had to wait on AAA and been to somebody fucking front yard. That's Yo, what you know what I'm saying? No, but like, seriously, I, I think I hit you about this because I was driving through. Um, well, I was in North Carolina last week. I don't know. My weeks are going together. We haven't seen you guys. Uh, you guys haven't heard from us in two weeks. But um, I was in North Carolina. Um, I went to D.C. and um, I went to Charlotte. But soon as I came over 85 into North Carolina, all I saw was Trump signs Mm -hmm. on businesses and and, and all of that. And I was like, the fuck? Like, you know, the the funny thing about me and racism (laughs) when I see it, you know what I mean? Like, you are so bold to do something like that. But then on top of that, it's an extra fuck you because it's like, I don't even want your money. Cause ain't nobody with good sense that is not racist or has a problem with, you know, uh, Trump supporters and things like that going to support your business. So you're basically, to me, that Trump sign as a banner on the outside of your business basically said, niggas, yeah. you can't eat here or niggas, yeah. you can't buy sure. here or, you know what I'm saying? And that shit was, I was the, like I was being followed around the store and shit. Like, bro, the fuck away from me, my nigga. Like, I'm in a gun store. What you think I'm gonna do? Like, how, what I'm gonna steal a gun? That's wild. That shit That's was crazy, wild. my nigga. And I, I, I didn't want to buy a gun, but I'm like, I gotta buy me an extra gun. Like, just I don't know. I mean, right. I got guns, but some just had me compelled to buy a fucking pistol before to like before today and shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it. you find ammo? Hell yeah. Oh, was ammo easy for you to find, or was it a good it was price? Expensive. No. Oh it was yeah. Expensive as shit. Yeah. Bought, it's like sixty dollars like, a box. I bought a hundred rounds. It was a hundred hundred box um, for sixty dollars. Oh, that's not bad at all. Cause I'm seeing only fifty rounds for sixty dollars. Oh yeah. And yeah. that's 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 regular bullets and hollow points. Yeah. That's so like same. that well, that not the same, but yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, the same bullets to. that were twenty dollars. And twenty five dollars months ago is now sixty dollars. Oh yeah, that's like the the it's guns been like that since um that shit been high since the fucking since this like I protest one of the white devils talking to, amongst another white devil. Um, I won't call him a devil. I don't know the other one, but the one that was following me around the store was a white white fucker. He won't. He followed me like initially and shit. And I'm like, I turn and I caught eyes looking. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Did you say that? Know? I looked at him with the what the fuck eyes? Like, yeah, because it was me and my homeboy and shit. My homeboy went with me. I was like. 
You know, like we looked at him like, nigga, fuck me. You just opened the door for us. Like, yeah, like, I mean, we got masks on. They didn't have masks, of course, because they're fucking white and they're fucking. Yeah, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's weird as fuck. Um, yeah, no, none yeah. Of the, none of the workers in there had masks on. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they got like a big ass sign that says like, Please face use cover. sanitizer. Like, oh, gotcha. you. That shit come from the mouth. Fuck you, man. Listen, I was in High Point. I stopped in High Point for gas, yes, right? And. I realized, like, I ain't never really been to High Point. Like, I've passed High Point and been through High Point, but I've never really stopped in High Point. But I just stopped off of 85 to get gas. And you know how, like, you, it was like a movie. Like, I got out the car, and then it was just, like, this calmness, and I'm looking around. And I'm really looking around, like, again, like a movie. It's, like, in slow motion because I got this eerie feeling around me, and I'm looking around, and there was not a face of color to be found that this gas station was like a sheets or something right but it was just so weird because I look over and I see like this biker gang sitting there I guess they getting gas and doing whatever but it's probably about 16 white men looking exactly how you think they would look with confederate flags all over their um, jackets and vests and shit like that and then I'm looking and it's just white people white people white people and they're walking in and out of this sheets nobody has on a mask right and this is the part that really like oh you need to be aware of where the fuck you at and what's going on right now because <laughs> it was a big yellow sign almost on every sheet I and went to and when I was in North Carolina there's a big yellow sign on the door that says face coverings required mask required nobody had on a mask my nigga they was going in and out that bitch didn't give a fuck so I'm looking like yo I'm literally the only black person here but for some reason I didn't get scared I was just kind of like oh like I got these niggas they about to try no shit with me. And especially like with the biker game. You know what I mean? Like right. they there, they doing their shit, but it was like no black people or just people of color, Hispanic, Asian, nothing. It was nobody. And they was just doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Then nobody checked them when they came in there with, without a mask on. They were just going in and out. Nobody had on a mask, my nigga. Not one. Not one person in that whole store. I was the only person with a mask on looking crazy. Mask was gonna stay on. Store attendants, uh huh. The store clerks. Um, they were white. Um, the guy who checked me out had a mask on, but it was like under under his His chin and shit. Yeah, it was under his chin. (laughs) Like he just had the shit on his ears. You know what I mean? Like a chin strap and shit like that. The niggas who gotta wear them shits all day. That shit is a different. I pray that. Yeah, shout out to y'all because that shit is tough. Like after about an hour, I'd be ready to take that shit off. Bro, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about running through the fucking airport with a fucking mask on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> last time, last time I went out of town and I flew and I had this fucking mask on and I was running so fucking late and I'm running through the airport with this fucking mask on, sweating bullets. And fucking can't breathe. Thought I was going to pass the fuck out like real life. I get on the fucking airplane. I'm like, (laughs) like, (laughs) nigga, I could not breathe. I'm like, yo. But you know, I'm working out and shit, man. That shit is tough as fuck. Like, I don't, I just like lift weights and shit. I don't be doing no cardio because that cardio. Oh, so you back in the gym. How was that? Uh, I go early, um, Mm -hmm. when there's not a lot of people in there. And then, um, I'll be wearing gloves. Like I got like, (laughs) um, like lunch lady gloves and shit like the <laughs> big shit. So I'd be wearing them. Yeah. And then like, you know, I just wipe every fucking thing down when I use it before I use it. And after I use it for courtesy for other people and shit. And then I'm on my own. I'm on my way out. Like I did. Yeah. I don't go like, every, I don't go three times a week. I go like once or twice. You know what I'm saying? But I'd be doing like cardio and shit around the crib, but I just yeah. go lift and be out. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it. And yeah. And in the morning, like you can get everywhere where you want to like, you know where you go like once you get yeah. off at four or five that shit get jumping i ain't going there that so the that gyms are, are are packed like based on what you're seeing like it's high participation in the gyms mm-hmm. hell yeah word I mean, not high participation but like four o'clock five o'clock when motherfuckers get off work that shit it'd be motherfuckers it, in there like it, it's a lot of black people right? in there yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, interesting yeah, yeah. it's a, i mean it's a bunch of everybody in there you know the old motherfuckers young motherfuckers black white you know what i'm saying 
my my yeah. gym is not open. I know a lot of gyms are not open. I can't necessarily say that gyms are still closed. I can't really imagine gyms being still closed in the Atlanta club, since well, everything is open. The club is open and the gym should be open. Yeah. Open three, but I feel like um I feel like our our governor gonna shut this shit back down. Oh yeah, shit about to shut back down. Second wave, it's on its way. So y'all need to start getting y'all toilet paper together <laughs> and all that, all that shit y'all love. Uh, you know, get, get your, listen, we what, seven months into this now? I don't know how many months we are into this. Uh, Lysol is still at a minimum. Like you can't find that shit nowhere. So, uh, <laughs> funny cause I have some right here. Um, but yeah, uh, maintenance people came in my crib. I sprayed that shit down. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's crazy because this second wave is definitely coming or it's here. We have 230,000 people who have died from COVID and people are still voting for Trump. Have you had any, uh, interesting conversations or lose any friends? In the past couple of weeks, in regards to the election, nah, I don't really talk to nobody. Like all yeah. the people I talk to, is my people, it's, Facts. You know, and even in the people that like are my people, it's weird because like I like out of one out of every ten black person people that I've met is like on some you know, everybody is fuck like like fuck Biden, you know what I'm saying? But really fuck Trump, like niggas, be, you know what I'm saying? Like fuck Biden, yeah. bitch ass nigga too. But it'd be the weirdo white, it'd be the weirdo blacks that just like go out their way to like be anti Biden and like it's impossible to be anti Biden when Trump is in office. Like I right. totally get why you have the disdain that you have for Joe Biden. Totally. It's super founded all that shit. But you got a motherfucker in this bitch right now that's telling white motherfuckers who has galvanized white people like no other motherfucker has ever galvanized white people since in our lifetimes or even even in any president's lifetime for that matter. Like this motherfucker is I fucking, agree a bellow to a fucking fireplace. You know what I'm saying? Like he is just stoking the, guy yeah, the flames, flames and, yeah. like, and you on the opposite end. So like my point is like, even if you have total disdain and even if you're not fucking voting, don't try to like, don't try to fuck niggas up by just like casting your fucking dispersions on. And mm. it's again, everything that Biden has done is some creepy weirdo fuck shit. But that motherfucker ain't at the helm of, and at the fucking podium telling motherfuckers that, to, that it's all good to kill you and has has not said that shit multiple times you know what i'm saying like and that's the thing for me like that shit is just weird as hell um you know what i mean like just shut the fuck up you know what i mean like if you don't give a fuck like if you don't give a fuck not to vote you shouldn't give a fuck to to give a fuck enough to be able to put you know what i'm saying all this other fucking exactly. rhetoric out there you know what i'm saying like that shit why, is the super most super weird shit for me ever like why encourage people to not disrespect vote our people like like Blatantly. in your face Blatantly, like blatantly. disrespected the fuck out of you, your mama, your grandma, your great great grandma, all that shit, like, and all your cousins, all your people, like, at, and and again, Biden has done that shit co covertly, right? But this motherfucker, like, you are being killed in the street, and this motherfucker is egging that shit on. Like, Listen, I've heard, it. I've heard this phrase, which I think is perfect. Don't compare to the Almighty, compare to the alternative. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I understand. I don't have a disdain for Biden because I know it wasn't just him with this 94 crime bill or whatever, whatever. Um, but I do think, you know, when Joe Biden wins, he will be the, huh, he's better than that guy president. Not that he was, you know, so accomplished and, and, and all of these other things. But my whole thing about it is if we go back into presidents, of my lifetime in which I've been alive for because I can't really speak on the feelings and things like that of presidents before my time and what other people went through. Fucking Trump is the worst. I will pick any of those other presidents before Trump. I will He's pick like fucking George Bush before, right? It don't even, right? You don't even have anything to do with a job like I wouldn't hire him for literally anything. Nah, that's not like he wouldn't not. be the best person for anything. Like I wouldn't let that motherfucker cut my grass. 
Bruh, I wouldn't even listen because of the type of person he is, even though he will be reality show gold and he has been reality show gold. I still wouldn't hire him for that because he's still spreading negativity. Yeah, like, did you see the, nigga. did you see the bus that, uh, the, the, uh, brigade, uh, that yeah. tried to run the Biden Harris yeah, bus off? Shit all week, nigga. They've been, they was doing a fucking parade down Newburn Avenue, like <laughs> on fucking Sunday. Like seventy cars deep, like that shit, like the rich boy fucking um video. Yeah, <laughs> that shit was fucking crazy, rich dog. boy selling crack. Yeah, man. Remember man. how they had this shit weaving and shit with the with yeah, the, like back that shit. How was that? How they had the <laughs> whole funny, fucking lane. Like, <laughs> seventy deep, like in big ass Silverados. Like where it up, yo? Like no, nah, they were shit. That shit was crazy. No, nah, li- like nigga, like for real though. Like we gonna have to start busting at some niggas. You're not just about to do that, like. I like the, the, the shit is you the shit them, is so crazy. You better believe yeah, that. and that's fine. They got a bunch of shit. You better hit them. They do. Then we in the bus. Let's back up. Let's run them motherfuckers over. Let's play this shit. Like yeah, I don't know. Hey. Like of course I can talk a lot of shit sitting, you know, behind the microphone and shit I mean, like you would that. Think they would but have Secret Service though. What the fuck? Like right, he had something. Like he was a vice president. They always get Secret Service. They, they, they have, have they have Secret Service for life, right? Yeah, but sure. I think you know my whole thing with any type of debate, any type of debate that I'm in, you know, I need you to present some facts to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I go on facts. Like, present present the facts to me. Present the stats. Present the video. Present something to me. And there has not been one uh Trump supporter or person who decided not to vote that had a legit reason for that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's either like some conspiracy theory shit. It's just some plain, pure ignorant shit. I talked to a bitch today that had, um, she was determined to vote Roy Cooper out. Um, because he make y'all wear masks and shit. And I'm like, bitch, you mad because you gotta wear a fucking mask and TJ Maxx. That's where you at all the time in your fucking story. And she was just like, oh, you know, I... He's not making you wear a mask, you stupid fucking ass. Like, he's not making you wear a mask. It's not a law. If you don't... Making you wear a mask means that you will get arrested if you don't have a mask. Mm, You're not getting facts. arrested. He suggested it and it's highly recommended for the fucking better well-being of the other people. So and the no TJ Maxx sense. put the sign that said you gotta yeah, wear a mask. Yeah, and that's the same if they fucking said you can't wear no fucking shoes. Like, motherfuckers is weird, man. Like, this one <laughs> motherfucker was like the same shit. Like, what if you got an asthma? Well, don't wear the fucking mask. Like, if you can't breathe, then obviously you don't want to. But if you also have asthma, you would be susceptible to this fucking disease. So you can take that the fucking, part, like, that ten, part, like, me, that yo, this part. shit was crazy, man. And it was crazy because my people, and I'm like, yo, I didn't call to talk to you about none of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to, like, why are we arguing? I ain't talked to you in a very long time, and you arguing over, like, this conspiracy theory ass shit. Like, why are we wearing masks? Do your research, B. I'm like, all right, my nigga. Do well, your you research. Like you don't have to. Like and so, you heard fine. you heard Trump new theory, which is super fucked. I mean, what I'm saying is super fucked up. Everything he does is super fucked up. His new theory that he's been pitching at his rallies is that the doctors get paid for people dying, so they're letting people die and blaming it on COVID. Nigga, why you didn't say that before you went to Walter Reed? Let them doctors know how you feel before you went to Walter Reed, my nigga. Like, they should have left your ass out there turning fucking from orange to blue. You should have been fucking dead out there, bitch. And how the fact you still breathing out here, I have no idea. I don't understand. I don't understand how how it works. I don't understand how everybody, these so-called gangsters and these so-called mobsters and these so-called everything else, and this nigga ain't got one shot taken at him. Man, shit is just crazy. Shit is crazy. What is your prediction? Uh, how what what are you predicting uh, for this I'm outcome? Predicting some wild shit. Like for the actual election results, what are you? Predicting? I don't know. It's you really don't I have know. No idea. I'm yeah. hoping that Biden wins, but I have no idea. I, I I I have my prediction is that I predict nothing because I literally have no idea what the fuck is going to happen today. Tomorrow's going to be the wildest day. The next two days going to be the wildest fucking days ever. I agree. I have no idea. Are you are are you prepared? Like, are you staying in, or are you yeah, pretty well, much going to the gym and all that other shit? Nah, I probably won't. I ain't doing shit. I'm gonna just chill for the week. I might go get a haircut on Friday, but yeah, but it, I ain't doing nothing. That's what I said. I was like, I already prepared. Like, I was when I was um home. You know, I told my family, like, look, y'all, 
Y'all need to go ahead, go to the grocery store, do whatever y'all got to do, like run whatever errands you got to run. You know what I'm saying? If you have any, you know, doctor's appointments on the fourth, fifth, sixth, you know what I mean? You might want to reschedule them shits because shit going to be crazy. And Trump supporters are going to turn up. Now, how they're going to turn up, I don't know. I don't know if it's just random violence. I don't know how how it works, how this civil war, quote unquote, is going to work. However, you need to be in the crib. And I feel like, you know, if Trump wins, then we're going to go out and protest, say the judicial system is not fair. I mean, the electoral system is not fair, X, Y, Z. And then that's still going to bring the Trump supporters out banging. I don't necessarily think the violence is going to start on the, the Biden supporters. Um, but I just kind of feel like either way, it's going to be some shit. Like we're going to hear some shit. Yeah. I mean, in terms of that. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, shit, I was wondering like if Trump do, do lose, like, are they going to fly Trump flags like forever? Like how they do like Confederate flag, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> real shit. Like, is that going to be like the new clan? You know what I'm saying? Like you just going to hmm. fly Trump. Like <laughs> is that going to be the new Confederate uh, flag forever. Like just riding with Trump for the, the end of the end of time, you know what I'm saying? Like real shit though. All right, that's what yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that <laughs> I, I, I just find it interesting. I always say this, that people vote against their own interests. You know, yeah. they vote against their own interests. I'm, I'm hoping I'm and praying that despite their face all day. facts. I'm hoping, um, I, I, I honestly have a good feeling that Biden is going to win. If, there is no interference um, besides the regular voter suppression shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we had Russia in the mix last year or, or four years ago. I feel like if we don't have that, we should be in a pretty good place. But again, it's 2020. You never fucking know. But I honestly, honestly, honestly be feel like if Trump gets four more years, the U.S. would be unrecognizable. Well, it yeah, it's, it will be unrecognized. It's going down now. That's so for those people who say, you know, we've survived presidents, we barely survived. And I can tell you 230,000 people who didn't survive this president. <laughs> this ain't no regular shit. This is a dictatorship. This is a dictatorship in the making. What they don't like, I, I've been listening to this podcast called How Can He Do That? Where they kind of break down the, the bullshit and how he's able to get away with shit. I've been listening to this podcast called um, The Motive and it's basically about skinheads and a foundation of like skinheads. And, you know, I didn't know that like being a skinhead was not originally a racist thing. Like it was kind of like this punk thing and they had all types of skinheads, black skinheads, everyone. And they had anti-racist skinheads. And then there was a um, racist, like Nazi loving dude that came in and kind of like recruited these kids. And that's how like the skinheads that we know of today are, are educated the most about how they came about, um, you know, being, so um, but it's called the, the motive. It's Well, you just said that some Nazi dude came. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it was real big in Chicago, which makes it so interesting. Like the skinhead movement really was really huge in Chicago and Illinois. Um, and you know, it goes through like the different types and talks to this guy and he was like the leader. Like when skinheads think of who, you know, who they are, you know, they go back to this particular founder guy and you know, they also sprinkle in with, with this podcast, they sprinkle in how Trump also uses these same tactics to galvanize his base. Right. And they also talk about the, how he, I learned a lot about Ronald Reagan through what's going on with Trump. Trump is using a lot of Ronald Reagan's playbook. And I, you know, I, I knew about, you know, Rand Contra. I knew about uh, how, you know, Ronald Reagan was racist and all of that. And, you know, I, you know, that's when I was born. Yeah. He was an actor, you know, all of that, but I didn't know his, I don't know. I guess I didn't really know that his agenda was as purposeful and racist as it was and how he basically has this playbook that Trump is using and not only using, but you know, to the 10th degree, you know what I mean? They, they, and Trump also uses tactics that were um, employed by Adolf Hitler. 
So that's why everybody is saying like, y'all think shit like this now and like, it's going to be okay. But you know, it was was 6 million people that died in the Holocaust. That's a lot of motherfuckers. Like, and even though I've been to the Holocaust Museum and I've learned about the Holocaust and I've seen Schindler's List like everybody else, I was like, that is a lot of people. I don't know why I didn't. I love history, but I just never seen it. But and I also wanted to go to the yeah. Holocaust you should museum definitely check out shit was closed. Every time I want to go to a museum in DC, like that shit, like I always go at like four. And be like, oh, we're closing at four thirty-seven. <laughs> like, god damn, like I'm all yeah. The yeah. Other side you can't go shit, because like, the Smithsonian. You know, it takes huh? hours. Hell it yeah, takes hours in those fire. museums. Like, you can't be like, I'm gonna go in twenty minutes, be out. Nah, it don't work like shit, that. Like that shit like, is one of the dopest shit. Like, and when I the last time I went, I don't know if it was the last time, but one time I went, it was like the they had like the um, like Thomas Jefferson and all them niggas, like all the, um, <laughs> you know, all the fucking former presidents and all that shit like that, and how they had like they had their basically like their slaves. You know how he had so many slaves and so many kids by all the slaves and shit like that. He had like mm-hmm. it was uh, it was crazy. Like they had all these different relics and shit. Like it was just it was amazing. He had mad like Northern Virginia shit. That was all Thomas Jefferson shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. history. So that was all his shit. Extremely dope. So I still haven't been to that. Y- you know what's you know what's sad? Girl mm-hmm. growing up, especially growing up in DC, that's all we did. We went on trips all the time. We went to all the museums. We went to everything to the point right. where you was over it. Yeah, I'm tired of going to the monument. I'm tired of going to air and space. I'm tired right. of going to the Smithsonian. You know what I'm saying? It's so crazy these kids now, they don't take them nowhere. That's crazy. They don't take them on trips. How are you in the nation's capital and you don't take the kids to museums and shit? Like when I go home, I have to take my nieces and them to the, to the museum. Cause I mean, it's different because of COVID, of course, but pre COVID, like they were, they were not taking these kids on trips and yeah. shit. And I was like, damn, that's wild. That's like such a waste and yeah, free yeah. education. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a day off for you, teacher. All you gotta do is yeah, be yeah. a chaperone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, y'all stay right here. We said yeah. this is what we learned last week. You know what I mean? Like sign, exactly, I mean, like, exactly. They team, have to. Like, I know they probably the art fucking museum down there. Bitch is probably crazy. I ain't, I'm not an art nigga, but yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. I want to go to the spy museum. I heard that's spy. the new lick. Um, oh, that's hard. Spy. Yeah, there's a spy museum. So that. I was like, uh, once all of this is over. Uh, I'm going, I'm going to take my nieces. Um, my nephew probably won't be big enough, but I'll, I'll take my, my older nieces to the spy museum. Shit. I'll go by myself. I'm just taking yeah, some yeah. kids with me. <laughs> like I want to go, I want to go, I want to go any fucking way. Oh, um, did you, did you do anything for Halloween? I saw you dressed up with the kiddos. Did y'all actually go yeah, trick or treating or trash. how was that? It won't trash. They got, uh, they got a good amount of candy, but it, like, I got a big ass neighborhood. It's like five, six hundred houses in my neighborhood, so the shit be jumping, you know, normally. Um Yeah. It was a little chilly too, but not that bad. But um but yeah, man, that shit was lame. I mean it was cool. They enjoyed it, they had a good time, but it was just not a lot of people participating, obviously for, for COVID related reasons. Um Yeah. I'm surprised you actually participated in going to niggas' houses and I mean it was came. nah, they had this <laughs> like, set up like you it was minimal contact like outside of course it was outside so like yeah you know, people had their um oh okay they had their so you had to go like knock nah, up I on mean, the door did, say trick or treat really. shit um like it was maybe one or two houses that the kids went to but um you know they had their mask on like in addition to like their um yeah huh. oh yeah it really that does. sucks so, yeah, it is what it is um you gotta be saved if yeah, you want so this they candy had mask on um and then a lot of people just had like tables set up, you know what I'm saying? And they just already had the bags like prepared. Um, oh, and then, you know, people, okay. Yeah. That's good. Some, some people had like shoots and shit, you know what I'm saying? Well, they shoot the candy out. It was pretty dope. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, that's pretty yeah, cool. I mean, it was, it was, it that's was pretty cool. Dope for what it was. I mean, you know, when you see groups of people, you just stand to the side, you know what I'm saying? Like social distance. Yeah. Shit. It was trash, but kids was all right. The world gonna be so interesting well, once all this is over and how human contact resumes and if it resumes. Um, but yeah, and then I went Saturday night. I went and watched the fight at my homeboy house and stepped street. Um, and that was excellent. Uh, it was a really good fight. All the whole, it was dope because all my homeboys, not all my homeboys, but a good amount of my homeboys was over there. So, you know, it was, we was playing the COVID game. You know what I mean? Nobody had masks. I was extremely fucking drunk, but, um, you know, I'm good. <laughs> 
Um, you know, just because I mean, at some point you're gonna have to have some type of physical interaction with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just can't sit in the house all goddamn day. It's just re- like all day, all every day. You know what I'm saying? It's just very difficult for me in my social life. Um, so yeah, but nah, it was a good fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a good fish. Yeah, I got really fucking drunk. I was fucked up on Sunday. Like, it took me forever to shake back. I ain't been that fucked up in a while. Um, <laughs> what were you drinking? What were you drinking? I forgot. Nah, like brown, tequila. oh and tequila, I drank pretty much the half. Like, it was a fifth. I drank half the fifth, like, and I didn't even realize it. I was just getting fucked up. We was having a good ass time and taking shots to every fucking Listen. thing. Nah, that shit go. That shit was fucked up. I ain't. and then Listen. time went back, and then like so we stayed up till like four in the morning just talking, and <laughs> sitting around, and then like I woke up because my body's like programmed to wake up super fucking early. So I woke up. I ain't go to bed till like five, and then uh, I'm so glad I'm not cursed eight. with that. that. Shit was so fucking lame. <laughs> And then, like, yeah, I had to make breakfast because Tiff made breakfast the day before. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. And then so mm. I made breakfast. The shot went way back down. Fuck that shit. Kids was on their own. <laughs> you on your own. I was in, um, I told you I was in, uh, I was at home. Then I was in Charlotte. So oh, yeah, you I was uh, COVID, occupied COVID, the past two. two. Oh, no, uh, no I wasn't. Was. <laughs> I had approved motherfuckers in my house. Mad people at your crib. Listen, it wasn't mad people at my. It's mad people in my yeah. family, like in my immediate yeah, they, family. I mean, I'm sure they all like be around other motherfuckers and shit. That's just how shit go. Hey, well, that that was my risk that I took around my family and around my certain set of friends, which I which I do. Um, you know, if you if you if you look at who I've been around for the past fucking seven eight months or however long it's been it's been it's been the same individuals you know um some people are required to get tested every week and everybody else kind of goes off of them like if they don't have it we don't have it <laughs> like, you know what i mean because because of their jobs or whatever the case may be but thank god lucky um i haven't i haven't been in any uh situations and if i have had covid it's been asymptomatic and it needs to stay that way um but <laughs> Um, I haven't been in those situations. However, when, when I was home, we had, um, you talking about tequila. Listen, when I was in Charlotte, shout out to, uh, Tia, it was her birthday. And, um, we had so much fucking 1942. Y'all niggas rich. I like it. And they rich. They rich. I, listen, I bought a bottle because it was her birthday. And I bought, I, I, I bought a bottle because that's what she requested and oh, she's done a lot for me. Um, so I bought that. I mean, it's, you know what? It, when I first processed it, I was like, that's a lot of fucking that shit money. Was, that shit like a book, I mean, man. I done had it before, but I've never purchased it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's a lot of money, but I was just like, you know what? If I was going to their house anyway, I would buy alcohol and it would probably come up to that amount anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm buying Hennessy. I'm buying 1800. You know what I'm saying? I'm buying that shit. You know what I mean? Three bottles of alcohol is $140. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, so I was just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm just going in with this though. <laughs> Here's this. Here's your $140 bottle. But we got so fucked up. She had mad bottles of that shit. We got shit. fucked up on that shit. I took my shit back. <laughs> oh, you don't need this. You was got this. Hey. Shit, I'm okay. I'm like 30 bucks. The fuck? N- listen. I'm slide this shit to the crib. Party foul. Do not come around me. Do not come around. Don't come to my house. Do not take your alcohol nah, back. I feel like that's the most classless thing nah, that you can do it. is bring alcohol and then take that shit. Like you too broke to be hanging around me anyway. If you got to take that's your alcohol back, like we, we shouldn't even be that hanging out. That, that like if you got to take your alcohol. That. Hey, listen, it was her birthday. You was not about to take your man's 1942. Yeah, <laughs> Don't <laughs> even lie. Nick. I mean, it was a mad bottles of the shit. Like, it was so mad bottles like, man, of the shit. Like, uh, so I would much rather her just like, like, for me, I don't want 30 bottles of fucking, or even 10 bottles of fucking. That's, if that's, that's what you drink, you can, I would I'd definitely ask 15, for that. I'd rather give me a buck 50. But you won't go spend that buck 50 on the same alcohol if that's what you drink. See, that's not what we drink on a regular basis. You and I, that's Bro, not what we drink dollars, on a regular basis. That's a lot Different people live. People. Like, I've never given anybody that I love, like, outside of my mama and my wife and my like immediate family a buck 50, like, for their birthday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That That's oh, not okay. a problem for me. Okay. It's 
not a problem because I'm not doing it for somebody who would, who's not doing that for me or, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know what I mean? Like, these the motherfuckers when I ask them, hey, I'm headed to Jamaica, they like, all right. Fifteen hundred dollars. I can give you a hundred and fifty dollars. You know what I mean? I come to your house. I ain't got to pay for shit. Y'all, y'all wait on me hand and foot. I'm good. Like it, it ain't no yeah. A hundred dollars. That's light work. You know what I mean? One hundred fifty dollars. That's light work. Now, granted, I'm not about to buy myself that unless I'm celebrating some shit. <laughs> like I'm not about. But if that's what you drink and that's your class of drink, then you know what I mean. Like it is what it is. Not like you just like oh come through and. On your come through, just get a yeah. bottle of a 1942. They drink that shit on a Wednesday. They drink that shit like it's nothing. But granted, they're all blessed. They're all black women with great jobs. And hey, if you yeah, got I mean, it, shit, fucking I, I spend it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just ain't for I, I me. Mean, I could, I could afford <laughs> it just ain't. 150 and all that shit like that. But goddamn, I wouldn't, I feel weird asking yeah. you to bring me like a, I don't know. That's just. I rock. I rather you just got them. You can bring a bottle of food or some shit. I don't know. I guess I don't be asking my for shit. Listen, so I ain't really that shit weird for me. To 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 to, to her credit, I said, "What Let's are you go. drinking?" Because I always buy liquor before I go because it's always cheaper than in North Carolina. ABC. And Stay I tight. asked what you, what you wanted, and right, and you know she was just like, "Well, I'm drinking this." However, I'm totally good with yeah. eighteen hundred. You know what I'm saying? But it's your birthday. So I'm not going to buy you some shit that I get all the time. Like, and you my nigga. You know what I mean? I fuck with you. So like, no, that, that, you know, that ain't like, like work. Though. Like Girls are way better at giving gifts than men. That's just the reality of it. I feel like if your nigga said, buy me this bottle for my birthday and he your okay. nigga, I feel like you going to buy it. <laughs> it's, all right let me ask you this is it because you have a wife and kids and a bunch of priorities or you just like nah, regardless i'm not spending that i'm not doing that, <laughs> I'm not doing that at all I'm, I would not. like i'd much rather buy you i'd rather buy you like i'm not doing that i'd rather i'd give you some shoes or something i'd rather buy you what you want don't 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 be a uh, bad gift giver yeah, like i hate when people do, buy you what like, they want to buy you i've been to girls birthday parties like they home girls they all they all their home girls got them like gifts and shit like presents and shit what the fuck i'm like damn none of my niggas give me nothing like like girls is girls is dope you know what i'm saying like girls <laughs> Exactly, yeah, girls like, are dope like niggas that. Ain't, like, niggas bro, is trash. Niggas come the whole gift, like wrapped up and shit for you, like on your birthday. That's weird. That's super. Man, <laughs> nigga, what the fuck? I think you talked about that before. You said that that I shit was weird, it, bro. Like weird. weird. If I did, weird ass like, gift. You just come through with, 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 with it wrapped up and shit on the boat. Like, yo, hit my nigga. I was thinking about you. <laughs> what the fuck you want? <laughs> what if it's just like in a gift bag? Nah, bro, just what if it's bag, in a gift in a Mason bag. bag or whatever the fuck you where you bought that shit from? The food locker, the foot line bag, <laughs> the foot line, the um, foot locker bag. Like, so if a nigga come to you with a gift or wrapped up, you yeah, gonna ridicule bro, like, that nigga bro, fuck, man. for giving you a gift yeah, and like, spending bro, his on, money like, and probably having this his this girl wrap that <laughs> shit up for you? What type of time you think this is? <laughs> It make you feel yeah. gay. What I don't understand being. I do not understand being like at beat. all, at all. Why a lot of moves I made in my to life the, uh, to the to the customer service desk and put, <laughs> <laughs> picked out some paper and some a uh, fucking bow for you. Hell no. Nah. Oh man. Oh wow. Wow. Don't do nothing nice for bruh, niggas, bro. If you Don't wrap this shit do up, nothing if you go to nice for a nigga. Pick out some fucking paper and a bow and, and the colors and shit. Nah, bro. Don't do me like that. All right. Let me ask you this. Is it different when your sons get older and they get you a gift? Is it okay for them to wrap it um, or get it wrapped and get it to you? Is that yeah, different? But I'm like, oh, niggas ain't got to do that, man. We niggas. Just give me this shit, bro. Like, we don't need all that pomp and circumstance. <laughs> See, niggas need to, to be trained and do shit on a regular basis. That way it won't seem weird and they know to do it for other I mean, you people. You do it for women. Like, like definitely wrap a gift for a woman. Right. Have you ever wrapped a gift for a woman outside of a Christmas uh, gift? Um, I don't think so. And have you ever wrapped definitely it not, yourself not, outside it of a Christmas gift? It, don't, it ain't going to look good. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, if I'm going to wrap it, it's going to have to look good. I don't want it to be all fucking bow tangles and shit. Oh I'm my not, god, that is a high. But like niggas ain't trying to get no gift bag and none of that shit like that. Like, I mean, I will now because I have an old lady and she makes me. But 
Like before that shit, nah, man, I'm not doing all that shit, man. I'm just give you the gift. Just give it to you in that fucking brown paper yeah, bag. Yeah, the bag that I bought it in. Like, <laughs> I bought it, so there you go. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't never really just bought it. Like, is, is anything too intimate? Yeah. Like, if a nigga got you a, a pack of boxes, yeah. would that be too intimate? Nah, I mean. Like, if it was just like some polo boxes, like, like nah, hitting yeah, it. Yeah, like, yo, like, here, yeah, bro, I got, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had some extra, some shit. Like, can you fit these? You got to, like, pose it. Like, you can't be like, oh, I was thinking about you. But he couldn't have went and aimed for that. He can't be like, yo, I'm getting yeah, these like, you some to polo get, like, boxes. Like, yo, I got the plug. Like, you have to say, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't like I got this for you. That shit is weird. Like you have to, you know what I'm saying? You got to be creative. Like you can't just, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't just be like, oh pop up man, with, like, some, some, some shit. Like or if you with a nigga, like yo, I got you, bro. Fuck, it's all good. It's that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I've done that. Like I don't, you know what I'm saying? My niggas, we be out or some shit. We go to the mall or something. I'll get a nigga a shirt. Like yo, I got it. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. But like. I've never just offered to buy somebody Lord. some clothes. Like, n- not yeah. a friend. Like, hey, oh, you want that shirt? Let me pay for that. Like, oh, you got some shoe, yeah, some food? I'll pay for that. You got some drinks? I don't think what? I've ever been like, oh, friend, just friend. Yeah, somebody I was fucking, yeah, but like, friend, hey, let me I, buy I, that like, for you. I mean, what's the difference? Like, if you gonna buy a nigga food, like, if you buy a nigga food or buy a nigga drinks or some shit, if a shirt costs $30, like, shit, I'll grab it for you, my nigga. Like, especially if it's your birthday. Like, it's just not no, like, I think it's food we kicking in, we fellowship. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, if y'all, like, oh, okay, yeah, you like, saying more. Out on your birthday. I, that's that's what I'm taking like, it as, like. You know what I'm saying? I done did that, like. You know, I'm taking it like you and your nigga just at the mall. Some shit, I give him, like, $50 to the shoes or some shit like that. You know, I done did that. Like, for birthdays. Okay, but it was a yeah, birthday or something. On the whim. Oh, see, the way I thought of that, it was like, oh, me and my nigga just kicking it, and you just like, like, me and you just out, and you go to buy a shirt, and I go, no, hold on, B. Let yeah, me I pay mean, for but that. That's like, it. I mean, if you it's not your it, birthday or some shit. I'm going to buy, I buy, I get it, you know what I'm saying? That's, I think that's more, like, that's more reasonable in terms of, like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's no different than buying a nigga a drink or buying a nigga a bottle. It's the same. It's, it's still merchandise, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm buying you food and I'm buying you drinks because we're fellowshipping and we're yeah, in we're this. Um, I get the scenario. I get, I, I, I get the scenario if it is the person's birthday. Um, I've, I've definitely done that. I don't know what to buy and we might be out and like, oh, here, this is for your birthday, but I've never just voluntarily decided to pay for a friend's clothes that they were buying just arbitrarily. Like, like, nah, I don't think I've ever did that. No, nah, I'm like, good. I got this all good. I'm, I'm super good. I'm super good. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, nah, nah. Nah, I don't, I don't see myself. Not that I would be like so against it. I just don't see when the opportunity would come where I would just feel like that in the middle of Macy's. Like, you know what? Your money's no good here. Let let me go ahead and, and, and buy this for you. Uh, but like I said, I'll, but on the flip side of that, I will, you know, uh, it, buy you food. I will buy you alcohol, uh, all, all that type of shit. So, uh, that, that is, that is very interesting. Um, this versus before, before we get into your, um, black facts, um, this versus, Maybe coming up where it is Jodeci, right? And Timberland has hinted at it. I don't know if he's exposed more since we've been on this call. Probably not, uh, because it's election night or whatever, but he's hinting at Jodeci. And I've had two debates about Jodeci. I'm saying Drew Hill. They can't go up against nobody but Drew Hill. Somebody else is arguing me about boys to men. Which, which one? Would be a better versus versus boys to men and who else? Drew Um, Hill um, or Drew Hill. hmm. Drew Hill got what, like seven, eight songs? Nah, Drew Hill got joints, man. Maybe like ten. Drew Hill, Drew Hill got at least as many songs as Jodeci. Uh, Yeah. Or if not as many songs as Jodeci, they are. First of all, Boys to Men is like a mega group, right? But I feel like they're just a different vibe. You know what I mean? Boys to Men is like that squeaky clean, like preppy song, like, you know what I mean? Like 
I think of uh, End of the Road and Motown it's Philly so and all that shit. Whereas like, no, it's great music, but if we're comparing like apples to apples, I feel like Jodeci was like that bad boy type R&B. They wasn't like crooners. They was just like, bitch, I'm going to sing to you while I fuck you and I'm going to leave you yeah. here. <laughs> like, the boys and men want to make love. Music. Like, they make love music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, Drew Perfect. Got more and I feel like Drew sure. Hill is the best competitor. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I'm just like, ah, uh, for me, I wouldn't I don't know who I would want to see Boys the Men battle. I like Boys the Men, but I feel like Boys the Men was such a mega group that it's still music of theirs that I'm tired of. Just because I heard it so much. Um, yeah, I just feel like that they they was just a, such such a big group. And end of the road, they played it so much in DC. Like they played that song for like two years straight. Like real talk. Like they played that song. shit for like two Shut years straight. Face. And I'm over it. I'm cool with hearing End of the Road. Like it's a lot of it's a lot of Boys to Men songs that I'm cool on hearing even to this day. I like the album cuts, but not really any of their singles. Not because they weren't good. They were just so big. Like Boys to Men was a huge group during Boys to Men's time. Yeah. Like was there a group bigger than Boys to Men during that time? Uh, TLC probably. Yeah. Male groups they probably, though. They probably be a good battle. That'd be a good battle. Hmm, that might be all right. That'd be a good battle. No, nah, that might be all right for real though, B. TLC versus Boys the Men. I think we always be trying to match up genders, but that would that would be a good yeah. one. For real though. Yeah, they just that might be an all right joint. Like they couldn't sing with them. Like it would be Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, it would be a it would it would literally be like a hit for hit yeah, type thing, not necessarily singing type shit. Yeah, because TLC was the biggest are they still the biggest girl group ever? Probably. I mean, probably yeah, because it's not a lot of groups. Sure. Yeah, my <laughs> true, <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Fucking, but <laughs> but Drew Hill. I feel like Drew Hill. So the or the, the second debate. I'm saying I'm a Breakfast Club. SWV and fucking um Jodeci. Be, be, Jodeci. Hmm. Oh, let me ponder on that. <laughs> SWB. Let me ponder on that. Cause for real, like I never thought about that matchup. Yeah, and dope. that matchup might be dope as fuck. Yeah, that should be hard. Nah, that shit might be dope as fuck for real. Jodeci versus SWB. Um, but with the Jodeci versus Drew Hill debate, come and talk to me or beauty. Uh, um, come and talk to me. That's what I, I was I saying. Play, if I you, said if it, they play "Come and Talk to Me." You got to play "Sleeping in My Bed" remix. Like that's like those are two like hip hop s songs. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you got to play like. Come and well, talk then you got to play the "Come." Dun, 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 boom, boom. You got to play "Come and Talk to Me" remix then against nah, "Sleeping in My Bed" it. remix. You get like I play whatever I want. Like this is my music, but I'm playing "Sleeping in My Bed" remix because it's still like more of a ump tempo like. Come and talk to me was a ballad, but it was still somewhat up to like up tempo. But come and talk to me had a remix. Yeah, that was comparable to sleeping in my bed. Remix. Yeah, but I mean, if somebody plays that, I'm busting out with. If you play come and talk to me, I'm playing sleeping in my bed remix. Because sleeping in my bed was super slow. Like that was more like a slow ballad. Like to keep the energy up, I'm playing sleeping in my bed remix easily. Yeah, but I definitely think sleeping in my bed was way better than sleeping in my bed remix. Mm, hell no. Nah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I mean, Brett and JD was cool, but I didn't, I don't think I necessarily needed that a remix today. Crazy. I love that shit. That's it one of my was, it was Brett songs. and JD, right? That, so that's what the debate I was in with somebody about beauty. Cause they like beauty is like their favorite song, period. And I was like, beauty was a great song. I love beauty, but like verses is about the collective. You know what I mean? Like what the crowd going to react to. Niggas Most gonna, and I think the react, crowd will yeah, react to to come and talk to me because I'd have been to like groove and shit like that and you know they only play R and B and anytime they play come and talk to me everybody get into their KC oh yeah like <laughs> everybody get into their KC like that name with fucking beauty come on though Cisco niggas be singing the fuck out of Cisco like Cisco. I love Drew Hill. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just playing devil's yeah, advocate I here. Know. Like, I think both of them songs fire as fuck. So I'm just talking about crowd. Like, I'm just thinking about like the crowd. I think people gonna react because I feel like that was a single. Everybody knows. Was Beauty a single? 
know. Yeah, hell yeah. That was when Jazz died. Was that's when the old girl, um, won't Jazz, that's one the Jazz was in, on it? When he had Myra from, um, Oh, was that, that? was that that? No, I think that was five steps. No, nah, that wasn't five steps. We were fi- shit, five steps. My nah, shit. I was saying that like ISIS. Five like, steps was my shit. My nigga, I'm gonna listen to some Drew Hill this week. Jodeci, First, I gotta Jodeci let them announce it. Jodeci should have battled like one twelve, and one twelve would have got them the fuck out. Nah, one twelve don't have enough. Crazy as fuck. You crazy they as play, fuck. We already talked about this, I feel like. They smoke Jagged Edge, and I'm like a super Jagged Edge fan. They had mad shit that they didn't even play. I think Jagged Edge was comparable. Nah. 112 got smoked. I don't think Jodeci is like, comparable to 112. Jagged Edge is my favorite group of all time. Do you feel like 112 has a chance against Jodeci, yes. though? Drew Hill has a chance Nigga, against Drew Jodeci. Drew Hill don't Look, have a chance 112, against 112. Jagged Edge don't have a chance against Jodeci. That's a fact. They didn't have a chance against 112. So 112 don't have a chance against 112, <laughs> against Jodeci. What'd you say? Man, man nah. crazy as hell. Well, 112 can beat listen. the fuck out of Drew Hill. 112 got mad hits. They- 112 can beat Drew Hill. Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. Drew Hill no. don't have but 10 and- songs. Nigga, Drew Hill has like three albums you can play from beginning to end. Not widely known. From beginning Not to end, yeah, they sold. They were multi platinum every time. The first three niggas, albums, like one twelve. Them niggas. One twelve had one platinum album. Crazy as hell. They had room one twelve. What was the other album that was real the big? Fucking the Peaches and Cream album. The shit that came out with Peaches and Cream that was big as fuck. Like that was the only song on no, that album. Wasn't. All right, now we gotta look up one twelve. Don't worry, I'll look it up. 112 hours. Now you can just play, you can just go to their fucking playlist when they did battle, uh, fucking what's the name? When they battled Jagged Edge. All right. So 112. So had two albums. Has, uh, 112. The first album is, uh, double platinum. The room 112 is double platinum. And part three is platinum. Boom. And then you got like hot and wet, pleasure and pain, like all that shit. That shit didn't do so nothing. So the first three albums. Are oh, so the first three. All right, they got three. Do they give? Jealousy got two. Let me see. Let's see. Because <laughs> probably true, but Jealousy, Jealousy, Jealousy bringing out Casey and JoJo shit. Like that. That's what they. Yeah, that's like. true that's too. What they gonna have to play for the rest of their shit. Forever, my lady, come and talk to me. Uh, where's the list of albums at? Jodeci albums is what we need to know. So they had Forever, my lady. They had Diary of a Mad Band. They had the party, uh, the show, the party, the, the hotel. But this this joint don't have like the records. So like they had for one twelve. But all three of them albums were great. I, I just want to see it, man. I, I'm not gonna even hold y'all while I do googling on this shit. But um, yeah, I I don't know who I would have in a in a Jodeci versus Drew Hill. Um, you you think who who would you pick in that? Um, I'd probably go with Drew Hill because they got more like they got they got a deeper catalog. But nah, it depends on. I mean, if Cisco play his Cisco shit, he probably gonna play Thong song. He gonna have to do his like three or four. Yeah, that is true. So but you Casey got the KC and, and JoJo, Lions, but you and they got for all my life and life, life, life. They got mad of their own individual hits too. Like but once they branched off, they still did their thing too. So, um, mm-hmm. it's pro- I I got it. Maybe Drew Hill maybe wins by a song or two, but I really don't know outside of like, yeah. Once they get out of outside of like ten to eleven songs, I don't know what what they're gonna be able to do. Oh, I, I uh, listen. I listened to so much Drew Hill when Drew Hill was out. I definitely feel like they got an easy twenty. I feel like Josie has an easy twenty as well, um, because their albums were probably like they don't have to just go to singles. They can go to album cuts as well that that were just as big. And then you know, like what make it so great is like back in them days, the movies used to have soundtracks and shit. So they might play some shit you forgot all about because that shit was on a soundtrack. So I'm saying, like, Live, live. True. Live, live. That was my shit, man. <laughs> and fun fact that people want to take away my black card because I don't think life was funny. You're fucking nuts. Yeah, I didn't find life funny at all. And nuts. I was so disappointed and I was excited. I'm like, fucking Eddie Murphy. Have you seen it since the first fucking time? Fucking Martin Lawrence. No, because I don't watch it anymore. You've only watched it one time? Why would I punish myself with it if I didn't like some it? shit? 
uh, whatever year it came out. So ninety what? <laughs> Life I, movie. Do, do Let's what? see. If I'll give you ten dollars just to watch it again, see if you like it. You gonna cash out me ten dollars sure. to watch it? All right, bet I watch it. Life movie. That's not it. Some ca- oh, it came out in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, cash up it ten dollars. If you don't like, and if you don't like it, you can cash up. You have to send me my ten dollars back. If I do, do like, like it, I gotta send it back. back. Okay, that's fair. I can do uh, that. I can do that. You ready to get into some uh black facts? Oh yeah, it's quick. It'll be real. Man. It ain't too much that's that's no me. problem at all. I've already decided that this will be a green episode for me. Um, so I will definitely uh, light up later um, because we got to get through this shit of the election and all that shit. So I'm preparing myself. Um, I'm prepared to have the first black and female vice president. Let's keep our fingers crossed. But before we can get to the future, let me let you get to the past with Skibbity Bebop. Oh, B's Black Facts. Um, this Hit comes it, from, I follow a bunch of shit on Instagram, so a lot of these facts I get from Instagram. But this uh, this particular page, it's N as in Nancy, M-A-A-H, as in Harry, C, as in Charles. Uh-huh. Uh, if you want to follow it, they got really dope shit. Um, but they have a, this particular thing that I'm looking at is a, um, it's a poll tax. Um uh, and poll tax mm, yeah, one poll of the tax. methods used to prevent African Americans from voting beginning in the late 19th century. Uh, after the 15th Amendment extended the right to vote for African Americans, a number of states enacted a poll tax as a legal method to restrict voting rights. Uh, the poll tax was especially effective in disenfranchising black voters since African Americans made up the disproportionate number of those who could not afford to pay. Um, and this particular, like, it's it was in 1954, which is wild because um, my mom was born in 53. Mm. So, like I've said before, we're not, we're three or four people removed from slavery, if you think about it, in terms of that. Um, so, yeah, it was like, it says, poll tax receipt, county of Hardin. Um, I don't know exactly what state, it doesn't say what state. But um, basically, yeah, you got to pay. Um, it was a person you had to pay to, to fucking vote, which was the wildest shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, a dollar fifty. Yep. So. Or two dollars, which was a lot of yeah. money then for people who didn't have money. I don't see how much it was. Um, listen, they've had poll tax, they've had literacy tests, they've had voter suppression, and then they've also had just pure violence. That should let y'all know that y'all vote means something, because they wouldn't be trying to take it from you if it didn't mean nothing. Like they had so just, fucking occupation on that shit. Like you had to tell what you did and shit. That shit crazy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. They had all that shit. They did a lot to to keep us from keep us from um, keep us from living, keep us from voting. That's crazy. Well, you don't have to tell the people what you're talking about. You can't just mumble oh, into the mic. Date where how it's signed? Like it's just like a check. How you fill out a check? You know what I mean? Like or a money order? Like it's got the date and it says one thirty one nineteen fifty five uh, was the date that this was written. So go check it out. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. A bunch. I follow a bunch of shit. So. Um, as I read off, you know, interest in black facts for the week, I will include yeah. the source of where I received it. It looks like it was, yeah, it was a dollar fifty for the poll tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a dollar fifty for poll tax. Um, I, all right. I would have paid the vote. Uh, huh? I would have paid the vote. This you would pay the. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they ain't, they ain't try to do that. Um. <laughs> Uh, but them backwards ass Trump supporters probably don't even have that. Right. But they still voting for that nigga. Um, you ready to get into some leadership? Yeah. All right, leadership is our pop culture segment where we talk about all the fuck shit on your timeline. Uh, I am drinking um cider actually. Uh, what are you, what are you drinking or, or did you smoke? Did you do any yeah, type smoked, of vices on this Tuesday? Cause Sunday fucked me up. Saturday fucked me up, but um, uh, I'm drinking a blue moon. Yeah. Blue moon. Uh, uh, Jada love blue moons, man. She loves well, this is like put that fucking orange in the it shit. It tastes like, and I hate coffee, but it tastes more like a game. ice coffee. Yeah. It's like a brewer select. It was, I brought like a. a that sounds real pumpkin spice latte. No, nah, it tastes like a Guinness. It's like a Guinness. It's like a Guinness blonde. If you have a Guinness, that's what I'm Pretty good. All right. So for y'all, uh, 
beer drinkers, y'all know what he's talking about. Um, so yeah, let's get into the bullshit. Um, so first up is, 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 is your guy. Um, so a judge in Cleveland put boxer Adrian Broner in jail on Monday after holding him in contempt of court. Uh, the situation was related to a civil lawsuit filed by a woman who was allegedly assaulted in a nightclub in 2018. So your boy Broner failed to cooperate multiple times with multiple deadlines. Um, the judge set for him and he also had to hand over documents, um, showing, you know, his finances and things like that. Um, and the judge ordered him to pay $800,000 in a civil suit, uh, with this, with this woman. And the judge said, Mr. Broner, you have continuously divide, defied my court orders that I've given and the jig is up today. Her words. That's exactly what she said. Uh, when he was charged back in 2018 for gross sexual imposition, uh, fourth degree felony, misdemeanor sexual imposition and abduction. Uh, which is a third degree felony for, uh, from a, uh, 35 year old woman, um, in a nightclub. Uh, he pleaded guilty in 2019, um, of unlawful restraint. So I guess that's like abduction light. Um, so they were both misdemeanors. The judge placed him on two years probation. Then the woman filed a civil lawsuit. Um, and that's where the $800,000 uh, come in. Broner, not only did he not show up for the hearing, he didn't even bring, uh, he didn't even have an attorney show up on his behalf. Therefore, you know, the judge ruled in this woman's favor. Um, during the, during the hearing, the judge, uh, cited that he's always on Instagram showing tons of money and large pockets of cash. Uh, Broner claimed that he only had $13 to his name. Broner is now in jail. Until he can provide complete and truthful information about his finances. B, these boxers, these your people. Broner is another nigga I don't really fuck with like that because I think he's ignorant as fuck. But make it make sense to me. What, what do you think about all this? Uh, you know, I don't give a shit. Um, Broner's a piece of shit. I don't like that guy. Um, <laughs> you don't like Broner? I didn't know you I didn't like Broner. I've said that a million times on this podcast. Really? Yeah. yeah. I can't keep up. Yeah. Um, but nah, I hate, I hate him. Like, because he has so much prowess in terms of boxing, but he just fucked nigga the way he's all his shit. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely got yeah. bread. Like, he definitely got bread. It says he's a, I mean, I, you know, the internet is the internet, but it says his net worth is nine million dollars. Yeah, he's a, he's a champion. Uh, he's been a multi, multi level champion. Excuse me. Um, he's been a multi level champion. Um, he's been a promoter. He's had, he's got a couple champions or I know one champion for sure under his, um, that fights for him, uh, under his promotion, uh, company. Yeah. So yeah, nah, he's gotten, he's got some bread unless he literally just squandered all that shit. And one would think, I mean, you know, it's, it's possible when you, you know, a nigga cause he's squandered all his fucking, um, yeah. Boxing and he's athletes, like a nigga, nigga but too. like he's, like just, he's like a nigga. Yeah, he's nigga. a fucking lame. Uh, he'd be doing mad corny shit. Like just yeah, all the time, did. like all the fucking time. And, um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, man. The nigga was lying like shit. You know, you know, the thing about it is, it's like, okay, you didn't even show up to present your side to even try to get out of this. You didn't even send, you had money or you had money. Um, you didn't even try. You know what I mean? Like, so this lady was awarded this almost a million dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars. So. What exactly do you think is going to happen, sir? Like, they're going to get their money. Like, the court of law has asked you or required you to pay this money. Like, you can at least set up a payment plan. Like, something. I get it. $800,000 is a, is a lot. And I feel like $800 is $800,000 is still a lot, even when you have 9 million. Cause it's not like you have a hundred million. So you're asking for like a fucking ninth of my money <laughs> like or a tenth of my money. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. But like, this is not going to go away, my nigga. Like, what is you expecting to happen? You're going to have to pay it. Like, yep. 
or you're either going to have to go through some more litigation to try to get out of it. But it seems as though he's not doing any of that. He's just showing up, being ignorant, Mm -hmm. and doing what the fuck he do. Like, it's hard for somebody to have sympathy for you, and you're not even trying to help yourself. I mean, he don't even do that in the boxing ring. That's what I'm saying. He don't even throw punches and shit. Mm. Like, it's weird, man. Because he last, his last fight was Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao beat the shit out of him. Like, and that shit was shit several, like, a couple years ago and shit now. He just, yeah. I kind of feel like I remember. He got, he got bumped up pretty good, right? Um, like, did, was he bleeding? I don't know. I can't remember, but. I remember it somewhere he was, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't follow like lightweight boxing and shit like that. You know, you can um, follow heavyweight boxing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I only follow. I like to see niggas get knocked out. You should. You should have watched the. You should have watched Saturday Night Fights because that damn retard fucking known as fucking Javante Davis in his fucking Baltimore, his two and do that motherfucker. Goddamn, not the shit. I, I thought he killed that nigga. I swear to God, that shit was so fucking vicious. Like, because he was getting like, yeah, I saw dude, a clip of that. He was fighting. It was a lightweight fight because them niggas is little bitty niggas, but it them niggas still still good boxing and um. Javante Davis, I think he is one thirty five, maybe. Um, one thirty five. Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, Mike, though, he got like Tyson. These strength, niggas though. be lazy. He's small as shit, but he got Tyson strength though. That like in terms of like pound for pound, he don't even look that small. Dude, like small as fuck. He like doesn't Floyd, look that Floyd, petite. Floyd look big around him. Like Floyd was like his promoter and shit, and Floyd was with him. You lied. And Floyd looked like he was about six two. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, Floyd looked like Janae Aiko. You telling me Floyd bigger than this nigga? Yeah. Or look bigger than this yeah, nigga? I mean, Floyd Damn, five, that's eight, crazy. Five, nine, you know what I'm saying? So uh, he like five eight. You yeah, sure? Floyd definitely five eight. He like five eight. He probably like a buck forty, buck fifty. Walk around like that. Have you have you seen him in person? Nah. I ain't never seen him in person. Yes. Uh, the, the reason I yes, asked I that. I seen him in the The reason I asked that is because, um, my brother and some of his boys saw, uh, Floyd in MGM. They seen him in MGM a couple times. And, uh, they, they all said like, yeah, Floyd little. And they were all co-signing like my brother, like, yeah, Floyd, like Floyd short, like Floyd was shorter than me. And my brother, like five, six, five, seven. Mm. Floyd about five, he about five eight, five seven five eight. That's what they listed him at. But I mean, oh, so you know it'd be like that basketball height where they put on nah, inches. They don't, they like can't niggas do that don't really be that cause, tall because Javante like oh, five, okay, like five four. You know what I'm saying? And okay, there's a considerable difference. You could tell that them. Niggas, Woo, five four. Yeah, that nigga like little. Yeah, you can fight like a bitch and like he a retard. That's he crazy. Got, like, a retard strength. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like <laughs> that nigga be super strong because he can't talk. Like, if you ever see any of his interviews, like. It's it's a fucking struggle, like you know what I'm saying. Like it's a super fucking struggle. You can just tell, like he was not good with his words, and he just had to fight all the time. Plus, he was from Baltimore. His parents was on crack, shit like that. You know the typical, typical inner city. Yeah, I just had a Baltimore conversation. Like all y'all move out of fucking Baltimore. Baltimore is just not the place. Yeah, shit. So Baltimore is is lost in time and all different ways. Like it's just lost. It's just a lost land of black people. Yeah. Sorry. In Baltimore, and ain't none of them quite right now. Yeah, they, like, I, I know quite a few. <laughs> them niggas is weirdos. That's a fact. They are. They are. That's why I kept. I be so offended when people are like, "Oh, DC, Baltimore, same thing." Nope, not. Nope, we're not claiming that. That is that. That is but not. Now he knocked this nigga out, and they were like trading blows, and like the other dude was a champion too. Like he was a Mexican. The Mexicans are, if you know anything about boxing, the Mexicans like Mexicans are the toughest of tough. You know what I'm saying? Like they kind of like. <laughs> reinvented boxing or maybe even created i don't know don't get me the line on that but i know that they have a very heavy presence in boxing and um not to do that he in particular that he fought was a champion it was his on paper it was his hardest fight um because the dude was you know like a, a decorated champion like won multiple belts and shit getting money um but they were trading blows like the mexican nigga was hitting that nigga because i never really seen javante like lumped up or anything he had a big ass mouse on his eye but in the sixth <laughs> round that he caught two he took two jabs like javante caught two jabs to the face and like dip one of them bitches and left left hook that motherfucker. My God, that shit. <laughs> the motherfucker, I swear to God, dude did not get up for three minutes. No bullshit. Like he was like he was in like laying there like with his knee twisted all out of place and shit for three minutes. Like sleep sleep. Shit was beautiful. Word? So it was at the end of the fight? Yeah, hell, nigga. Was that the knockout? Nigga, he was knockout? asleep yeah. for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's a count of ten. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. <laughs> How many rounds was that? How many rounds? It went six. That? 
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh. And all the fights on that card actually were knockouts. Like all four of the fights were all like vicious ass fucking knockouts. You got to be a oh, wild well, nigga. That box. dude, that sounds like something good. That sounds like something I would have enjoyed. Yeah, boxing that shit. Seeing man. something like boxing that. Good. Seeing boxing. something it's like that. It's like really one of my favorite. It's like probably it's basketball, football, boxing. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of revolve. They kind of you know revolve around each other <laughs> in any given day. What else is there after that that would be on your list? I mean, you know, baseball, baseball, football, boxing. And I like sports, so you be watching baseball like I watch that. Some of the play- you yeah, watching golf like that? Yeah, in the World Series. I like base. I mean, I like sports. I'm just sad. I just like athletic shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm competitive. I watch niggas play fucking bowl and fucking um, cornhole and shit. Especially when um, like over the fucking quarantine when all shit on there and all that was was bowling and cornhole. I was watching this shit because I just like competition. Like I'm just a competitive nigga. You know what's funny? I like competition too. Uh, but I don't think I I. When it comes to like sports and shit like that, I have to have an investment, but like everything I watch, like as far as like TV outside of sports, like it's, it's like I watch any type of competition. Like I watch baking competitions, singing yeah, competitions, yeah, like any type of, uh, talent competition, regardless of what that is, tattoo competition. Like I watch all that type shit. So I get it. Um, uh, but I'm still rooting for somebody most of the time. Like I'm still rooting for somebody. So when I don't have anybody to root for, I'm not really interested. Um, but I, it, it, for boxing, yeah. Like if it's some shit where you feel like it's going to be some shit like that, like let me know. Cause I, like you said, I don't follow boxing. I don't like seeing little niggas running around, but if some niggas going to get knocked out, I'm definitely down for that. So definitely make me hip when you feel like it's going to be a good right. one. Like. Real life, a good one, B. Like, but see, don't like, be wasting don't my you time. Be wasting, I don't want, you be wasting my time because if I tell you some shit and then you don't watch it, then I feel like, eh, because you, you definitely don't be watching shit. So, like, I recommend a match. I don't. Like, I don't want to waste my, my time. Yeah, you be watching, you be sending me shit that's 45 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes. Like, hey, I just don't have time for that. No, I, I just really so don't, I don't have time to watch all that. So it's hard for me to send you shit. Well, I'm I'm directly giving you saying, hey, for a boxing, let me know when there's some niggas that might knock some niggas out. Let me know. Just because you let me know don't mean I gotta do the shit. The fuck? My point. <laughs> like I'm just saying, you can open your mouth and recommend it like you recommend every fucking thing goes. That's it. We'll see. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. You I recommend shit to you. You don't that's watch it, you don't do it, and that's, that's cool true, too. Though. That's cool too. I don't know your but life. You, I don't you know, you know what, I mean, what you're doing. And it's not cool, but it, whenever you recommend some shit, I always watch it. Or I always listen to it or some shit. And you had this whole like campaign that like, you oh, you never do that. So I started listening to everything. Bruh, I had that campaign like two years ago. I don't need to say yeah, that know, shit no more. Like, so the time, I don't need to say it no more. And I, I rarely time. recommend some shit. Yeah, I rarely recommend shit. Like if I think it's some shit you ain't going to really be interested to or I'm going to be wasting my time, I don't recommend it. Which is fine. I feel like you should exercise the same judgment. If you don't think I'm gonna listen to the shit or watch the shit, don't send it. Like, don't waste your time. But I'm specifically asking you about boxing. So that is a request. So, for, you know, feel free to give me that information when you have it. Have you ever ducked out on the bill is my question. How about ducked out on the bill? Like, have you ever ducked out on a bill that had consequences? Like, I'll give you an example. Well, I've mean, ducked. My credit I've, and shit, I yeah. had bills. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Like, you avoided some shit. You knew some shit was yeah. going to happen. Uh, that's how I was. I don't do that shit anymore. You know how hard it is to get your fucking credit up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, after you fucked over your credit? Never. I'm never going back there. Shout out to me. I'm a preferred Bank of America customer or whatever. I was, I, I called Bank of America yesterday because I needed a card and I knew they had like changed my status and shit to like preferred, but I really didn't look into like what that shit meant. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I called Bank of America and I needed a new card because it was so when I went home uh, a few months ago, a month or two ago, whatever, last time I flew home, um, there was, uh, to get through clear that same time when I tell you I was running through the airport with the mask on about to pass out, I got to clear. They gave me like a free trial and shit to go through clear. So I needed it. So I went through, I went through clear at the airport and then it was this joint on my card for a fucking $179. And I was like, what the fuck is that? So they was asking me, was it fraud? So I said, yeah, cause I'm not paying it. 
And so what I didn't know is that they were going to cancel my card. Well, I've moved XYZ, the, the card that got lost in transition. So basically I've been using cash in my credit cards because I don't have my debit card. Um, and I, I called Bank of America like, look, y'all send me a card. I think y'all sent it to my old address. I need a new card. They said, sure, we'll send that to you. It should be to you in seven to 10 days. And I was just like, well, can I pay to have it expedited? And they were just like, Oh, no, that, that'll be free to you. You're a preferred member. And I was like, oh, word, bet, send the shit. Bro, when I tell you I ordered that shit about four, that shit was at my house at like three today. What is, I mean, what I was like, first? yeah, I think it has something to do with, uh, like, you know, the amount and that you have and how long you've had it and all of these things. But, um, shit, I didn't even read into it to see what else I get. I know I get like, some shit where you can, um, like you, you go through a, a special customer service. Like you don't go through the regular customer service. Like you get like first in line type shit. I don't know. I really need to look on it. But when I saw the fucking card, FedEx fucking the next day slid in my door, I was like, God damn, I wasn't even expecting this shit for at least like two days or some shit. I didn't know they was going to overnight the shit. Shout out to Bank of America. So I posted it on my story and, oh. Um, uh, a, fr- uh, a friend of mine hit me. He was like, "How you get that? Let me see if I got that shit. Like, let me look at my car because it says it on the car. My replacement car has that shit." And they looked. They was like, "My shit don't have that shit. How you get that shit?" I was like, "Yeah, I, 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 I really don't know. Like, I really can't too." But shout out you to Bank of America because like that, <laughs> that was fucking clutch. That was fucking clutch. Shout out, shout out to Bank of America. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between four point zero and four point six? Exactly, you know what I'm saying. So I say all that is because, listen, y'all, credit is more valuable than money in America. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas will give you fucking hundred thousand dollars worth of credit, and you only have a hundred dollars worth of cash as long as your credit is good and you pay your fucking okay. bills. Um, that's crazy, but you know that I didn't make the system. That's just how the system works. So I will never yeah, go back credit, to no bad else. credit again. They huh? got credit nowhere. They, were, they don't. Nah, I heard that shit. Well, I don't know if that's true, but I heard that shit like that America's the only one that got like credit and shit. Like, and, and if they do, other com- other countries adopted that shit. But I was watching Fargo, which is an incredibly dope show. And I thought that was a movie. But, I don't know. but it comes on FX and it's like shit, different mm-hmm. seasons. And this particular season that's going on now, Chris Rock is in it and he's like a, like a mob boss, but he's like the black boss and he's going against the mob and shit. And um, he, Chris Rock? he runs the numbers and shit's really fucking good. And um, and goddamn, like his idea, like he comes up with what a credit card could be, like, cause he's basically like doing loans and shit. So he takes that shit to the white bank and like tries to get a credit card. Okay. And of course, they deny like his request and shit. And then as he's riding okay. the street, like maybe a week later, he sees like on the side of a restaurant, like basically like, hey, come and join us for on on credit, like where your face is good or some shit like that was what the billboard had. And yeah, so I don't know if a black man created the credit card. I wouldn't be surprised if he did because that's, you know, we're great, the greatest. But if you haven't seen Fargo that comes on FX, it's really fucking good and it's really some gangster shit. And Chris Rock is bodying that shit. Um, like as far as being like a, like a, like a crime boss and shit, shit's fire. So check it out. Come on every Monday, but it's on Hulu. Well, uh, it comes on FX, but it comes on Hulu also. You, is it one season? Is that what? How many seasons? Well, it's four seasons, but like each season is okay. its own season. Oh, it's like its own season. Yeah, you, you you can watch it without having to know any type. Of yeah, thing. like this do this the, season do, is different. Are the characters different? Yes, yeah, it's, it's its own season each altogether. Season? Like it's completely its own season. Because you have like um you have like shows like American Horror Story. Yeah, and, I guess it's similar. Uh, different don't like that where they keep the same. Same actors, but it's a totally different story. They're playing totally yeah. different people. I was wondering if it was something like nah, that. Nah, I don't think so. Cause uh, like I watched different. the first season cause I knew Chris Rock was on it and I kept watching it and shit. And I'm like, yo, when okay. is this shit going, um, when is this shit going, you know, like get Chris Rock into it. And then I texted my cousin. She was like, oh, nah, it's a, like each season is its own season. She was like, oh, okay. So I just went, she was like, Chris Rock season is season. Uh, four. you went straight hey, to that. She good as fuck though. Like super fucking good. Gotcha. And that's what the fourth season? Yeah. The Chris Rock Correct. season? All right. 
Um, uh, Adrian Broner lying basically about having $13. I don't know. Nigga might have $13, but Adrian Broner having $13 and not paying his bills is literally shit. Lit. <laughs> it's lit because his ass need to be punished. Like, you just don't go around doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, so next subject, and I'm really interested to hear, you know, get get a little bit in depth about what your thoughts are on this. So Kim Kanye gave Kim a hologram of her late father, Robert Kardashian, who died back in 2003. The hologram of Robert Kardashian uh, delivers a special birthday message to Kim. You know, I guess recounting some of the favorite memories together and uh, telling Kim how beautiful she's looked. I guess she probably doesn't look the same way he remembers the shit. Uh, how beautiful she looks, uh, all of her hard work, how he's proud of her becoming a lawyer and a proud Armenian woman. Uh, he didn't say nothing about how she became a, a black woman or tried. Um, Kanye also, in true Kanye fashion, slipped the comment into himself and he had Robert Kardashian say, you marry the most, 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 most genius man in the whole world, Kanye West. Based on her post, it looked like Kim enjoyed it. Um, the company who created the hologram for Kanye West um, didn't disclose the exact amount of the hologram, but they did allude to it costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, when this issue has been very polarizing uh, and I understand that it is hard to buy a rich person gifts, right? Uh, I understand a person who has everything is probably hard to, to buy them something or get them something unique, but it's been so polarizing because some think it's super sweet and a good gift and some think it's creepy and in poor taste. Uh, where do you land on the hologram of the dead father issue? What do you think about that? Would you like that? Um, I don't know. I think them shits are creepy all together. So no, probably not. Holograms in yeah, general are weird. creepy. Like let the dead yeah. be dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That's just yeah. weird for me. Nah, I'm cool. I probably wouldn't want one. Listen, I think that it is super creepy. Um, as a person with a, uh, deceased parent, um, I think that is super creepy. I would not enjoy it at all. Um, I would even be offended and probably upset because one, you didn't know my father and then you put this speech in his right. mouth. You don't know how it feels. You, you, it's not like you and my dad were super, super close and you have references and, and you just like, all right, boom, this is what I want to do. First of all, I'm with you. The hologram in general is just weird. It's just creepy. I, I'm not saying I'm not with it in all occasions, but like for dead people and shit, you remember they had the shit for Pac mm -hmm. and shit during Coachella or right. whatever. Um, but this is just like, it was like bad taste to me. Like for me, I'm just like, you made up some shit my father would say. <laughs> First of all, you don't know if he felt this way or would feel this way at this point in time. And then I thought that the most crass part, crass part was Kanye in this most, 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 most genius man. Get your God complex having ass out of here, Kanye. Like that shit is weird to me. It does weird. And the fact that you would take that time to highlight yourself. That nigga's a weird. Weird. Man. Nigga's weird. That I nigga's weird. You. Like, I am so tired of talking about Kanye, Facts. bro. Facts. Like, I'm so tired of reading about Kanye. I'm so Facts. tired of talking about Kanye. Like, I seen some shit when he was on David Letterman's show. And, uh, um, <laughs> David Letterman was like, he was like, I guess they, I don't, I didn't see the interview in its entirety, but the clip I saw was like, he was talking about voting and shit. And David Letterman was like, have you ever voted? He was like, nah. He was like, oh, so you have, you have nothing to say about this then, right? <laughs> like then the whole crowd like erupts and shit. <laughs> shit, what he shit say? Like he just was like he had the wild gas face on. Like I guess you're right, type shit. Like fuck, like he's like because he was. I don't know what the 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 conversation was up to that. Like maybe he was like I don't know what the fuck. It was some I'm sure some narcissistic shit or whatever. But um the nigga David Letterman was like, have have you ever voted before? And he was like, no, this be my first time. Or he was like, no, I haven't. And he was like, oh, so you you really don't have anything to say about this at all? 
because you have a building. Like, you can't even complain. And then, like, the crowd <laughs> and shit and starts laughing and shit. Shit was funny as hell. He had the wild egg on his face and shit. Why would you even want to be president and you haven't yeah, voted like, before? Sure. Like, the bare minimum. Like, you haven't participated in the political process at all. Mm. And you think you can be president um, on my ballot there. Did Kanye appear on your ballot? Nah. Yeah, Kanye didn't appear on my ballot either. They had the write-in section. However, they had a, they had a, um, the position of surveyor came up and it was like literally nobody in that shit. Like you had to just write in a person. So I wrote in Kanye West. So good luck on becoming a surveyor. I didn't even know what a fucking surveyor does. And I had to come look that shit up. Person that looks at the a landmark. surveyor. Yeah, they, the, they, the, uh, the look at the, co- well, what I read was more so about like, is something stable, like a uh, property or something like that? Like, is it stable? Is it like in good condition? Um, that's what I read um, about a surveyor, but I'm not going to even sit here and act like I know well, what when a they surveyor survey land, does. Like you got to get like, less what you find out, like when they say property, I mean like the property lines and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like you like are responsible right. for like when you get your house surveyed, for example, if you buy a house and shit and you get a, like a plot of land, you should. The builders, if you buy a new uh, lot, then the builder usually gets it surveyed so that you can find out. Like, have you ever seen those stakes in the ground with like little orange tags on them? That's like the property line. So yeah, where your property yeah, lines are. Like they use just some type of camera or measurements um, object to mm-hmm. find out. So that's what a survey is, and I would imagine he's over all of them. Yeah, that's why I was like, well, what does the lead surveyor do? Like, and why are we? Why is that an elected position? A, that seems weird. Like, shouldn't you just be good at that nah, shit? I mean, I guess because it's, <laughs> it's a become a fucking surveyor. A, I mean, because it's still parceling up the 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 state in which you live, right? So somebody's got to be over top of that shit and True. manage it. I guess. Well, good luck, Kanye. Hopefully, you becomes the surveyor of Georgia. Because... Too, I have, like when I got my deck built and shit, or my screen and patio, they was talking about get a survey. I, said, I called that motherfucker. He was like, "Yeah, it'd be like seven hundred dollars." The fuck? No, it won't. I'm like, I'm like paying for that shit. And for you to come and tell me how where my property line is. Can you go? Can you go without it? Without it. Like, how are you gonna find out your? How are you gonna find out your where your property line is? Nigga, where I stop cutting the grass at? Y'all niggas cut y'all grass and where I, where, wherever. Like, if you cut your grass and the lot and cut it before me, and if you don't cut my shit on my side, I'm goddamn. That's what the property line is. That's what we be doing now. The fuck? <laughs> like, I just be goddamn cutting that shit. And shit. Wherever the line at, you best way you, that's where you need to cut your shit at, nigga. Fuck. Nigga said, wherever I stop cutting, that is my property yeah. line. Hey, that's super funny. If you had, look, if you had in a non-creepy way, if there was some way for you to legit have 10 minutes with somebody who passed away, Anybody, family, friends, celebrity, whoever, who would it be? Um, it wouldn't be no celebrity. It'd be, it'd definitely probably be my granddaddy for sure. Or even my grandma that yeah. I never knew later. My mom's mom that died when my mom was super young. Uh. I would definitely like try to talk to her just so I could see what she looked like and shit. So it'd be the one, it'd be one of those uh. two for sure. Yeah. I think mine would definitely be like my dad. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I would say like my grandmother, but, um, you know, fortunately and unfortunately I was able to kind of be around her when she got into, you know, um, her last days or whatever. Um, whereas my father was killed. So I didn't have time to, you know, have conversations with him and whatever the case may be. So I would definitely, uh, I would definitely talk to my dad. So, but not in a hologram. Don't give me no hologram. So when I marry Rich, don't What's give your me a hologram. Name? That shit is creepy. Uh, Willie. Willie. I don't know why I thought his name was Butch. I, <laughs> I was about to say Butch. I was like, what's after her? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for asking. Who are you call my pops Butch and shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, recipe Mr. Butch. Butch, but- y'all. I don't know. Butch is wild as I don't know <laughs> I don't what, know bro. Why. I don't know why Butch is so know, wild. Like, I was about to, I was like, let me ask, let me ask before I say Butch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Glad I did. Okay. No, Willie. My dad. My dad's name is Willie. You might hear him called Willie or Junior, but never gotcha. Butch, my nigga. Never, <laughs> never, never Butch. Um, Kanye giving out this narcissistic uh birthday gift is leadership. Oh, shit. I think it's shit, but I'm only gonna go with lit because Kim liked it. And I guess that's all that matters. The motherfucker who receiving it liked it. But Kim is also, I don't feel like she'll be like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> like, I don't think she would say that. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna go with lit just because, because Kim, Kim liked it. Oh, uh, last but not least, um, uh, earlier, uh, I think last week, actually, um, and I know you probably saw this. Uh, did you see hot boxing with Mike Tyson with Boosie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I listened to that podcast anyway. So when, um, when the shit notified me, I was like, oh yeah, let me go ahead and check this out. Like, absolutely. Uh, when I, when I saw, when I saw the clips, I was just like, oh, this might be something I, 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 I'll give a once over. But Boosie was on hot boxing with Mike Tyson and I love the name. I love the play on that and they smoke weed and he's a boxer and all of that. So dope Absolutely. name, Mike Tyson. Yeah, um, it's, it's super small. Yeah, like perfect. That's like how they hot boxing in this It's a hot yeah. box, you know what I'm saying? It's on, yeah. like, Mike Tyson uh, is a fucking beast. He got like, multiple 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 acres of fucking land in um california like the northern california area where it's like a weed farm he's got like fucking like 400 acres and he does like a weed um i don't know if it's completed yet but it's a uh, it's like a resort like all-inclusive weed resort type shit so it's like and it's also oh, wow. cannabis um wait you can you can go there yeah I don't know if like, it's is it yet, open to the book, public where you plan. can book it i don't it? know if it's open yet but it, it that's it's being constructed like that's that's why he got like he got a, a grow farm he got a dispensary on there and like he cultivates weed and he's got a, a all inclusive weed spot. I was supposed to go to Denver this year for my birthday. I'm going next year. Listen, I made a declaration. If we are in this same position when summer start to roll around next year, I'm gonna take my chances, my nigga. I'm not about to be in the house forever. Yeah, my nigga, like, I'm, like, I'm not about to be in the house like, forever. Like, I ain't, I'm a chill this winter and shit, but like, come my birthday, like, in yeah, April I'm a chill this I'm winter. Not, I'm not. <laughs> Facts. Fuck that. I'm doing. I fun. just feel like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over the shit. Like, I'm over the shit. Like, I'm gonna give it winter. Like you said, we, we gonna go winter. We gonna see what's good. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, once spring roll back around, I, I can't, I can't be, I can't, yeah, I, get it. I can't do it. Now I'm a, now of course I'm not just going to be out here reckless. I mean, I don't feel that I still don't, even though I miss going out, I, I still don't have like this dire urge to go to a club or go to a bar or anything like that. But other shit like traveling shit like that, I'm just hoping it wrap up. That's all. That's Australia, all I can do. I, I can just hope that it wrap no up. Cases. Like Word. Yeah, Australia is on my list too, or is on my bucket yeah, list. I've like always wanted to go to Australia. I like Australia. I, um, that flight crazy. It's crazy. Like, you gotta pop in. That flight is crazy. So you gotta go for yeah, a while. No, it's like, like two weeks. This is like a 10 day trip. Yeah. At least seven days. Yeah, so, it is a 10 day trip. Like yeah, seven for days sure. You get there. You know what I'm saying? Like, not like, yeah. Come leave on a Monday, come back on a Monday. You got to leave on a Monday, stay to the next Monday, then come back Tuesday type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta no get facts, shit, but I wouldn't go. But they said they ain't not no. I'm, well, they probably ain't letting Americans in that motherfucker <laughs> with leopards and shit. But um, yeah, nah. They they just reported that um they'll have the vaccine available and shit, and that they have no cases. But then you have Germany and England who are just locked down. Like they just doing they lockdown again. Yeah, they're they're locked back. They got. I think we're gonna cases. do that. that shit I think crazy. We had like five hundred. And if do you feel like do you feel like if 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 Trump win we gonna lock back down? Nah. Well, I know I don't know. I don't think he, ain't he locked gonna. shit down. Biden will lock the shit. That's down. what I'm saying. Like I don't feel like yeah, he's nah, gonna he's, lock anything down. Fuck. But come January 20th, if we still in the same position, I honestly feel like Biden and Harris. Would, yeah, I would think lock that the, that'll be their first the standing order is to because I saw um I saw Obama on um I saw him on LeBron shit um I forgot the name I just saw it earlier today but 
Yeah, it was good too. Um, Brock's just an ill nigga. Like he just he just got that swag, man. It's just that swag that's unmatched. But um, so much. He's I just love a great him. orator too. Like he just he just commands. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Like he just has a presence about him and shit. And it's funny because my wife is reading or listening to Michelle Obama's book, which is a fucking snooze fest. Um, but she talks about like, <laughs> Michelle Obama ain't never been exciting to me. I love Michelle shit, Obama. Don't get it twisted, but like, good gracious, like if you need to go to bed, yeah. listen to that shit on Audible. Yeah. <laughs> Like every time she played that shit, I fall asleep. That's my word. Like, and she's like, "Yo, this is the longest fucking book I've ever like listened to or read ever in my life." But she was talking about in the, how like how she met Barack and like how she was just she was a lawyer and she was just like you know kind of like just kind of wild and shit a little bit and wanted to like figure out what she wanted to do and then she met Barack and Barack knew exactly what he was gonna be. Like she was like from the time I met Barack, like he knew that he was gonna be president. Like he just had that genesis quad. Nice, himself, you know I love it. And she was like, he just had I love this, it. this like this Hawaii ass personality. Like nothing ever got to him. You know what I'm saying? Like everything just rolled off his back. So in that, I guess my bad, change of time. But um, in the shop, he said that like the first order of business would be to cr- get coronavirus under control. He was like, we have to get that's that's the first order of business for any person. Like any, he's like, and this administration administration has not done it. And I think the new administration that's going to be their 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 focus and their attention. So I think. Um, it would probably go to a mandatory lockdown. I think that they would end up passing some legislation to help people out, um, you know, to, to, you know, get people money in, in the time of need and officially shut shit down. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That's just my thought. That's my hope because I sure would like the shit to be gone around April so I could like make moves. But I need this shit to be over no later than first quarter. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Like, I need that shit to be over first quarter or at, at, um, a manageable rate where we can, you know, honestly start to live life right. again. Um, yeah, but you know, this shit just crazy. This, this shit crazy. Um, uh, <laughs> tangent, uh, going back to Mike Tyson. So oh, <laughs> Boosie, right. Boosie was on Mike Tyson hot boxing and hot boxing with Mike Tyson. And, um, Mike Tyson brought up, uh, Boosie's comments about, uh, D Wade's 12 year old child, Zaya Wade, who came out as trans transgender after reminding Boosie, um, of this saying, he was like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, Mike Tyson then, you know, questioned Boosie about his insecurities stemming from sexuality and the reasons behind, um, his offensive comments. He asked him, uh, why do you say that about them? Do you feel that there's a possibility that you're a homosexual and by disrespecting them, you further yourself from being a homosexual? I think you may like homosexuals, which that was the funniest thing to me because you have to think of this statement and Mike Tyson saying it like, <laughs> like, <laughs> What is your problem with them? Is the possibility that you're a homosexual and that's why you don't like home? Like with this whole list, like it was crazy. So Boosie said, no, he strays the arrow. He said, if you're straight, then why do you offend people? And Boosie basically commented and said that um he was offended, you know, because it was a child. He said if it was like 18 or 19 years old, grown person, he said he wouldn't have said anything. Um And Mike Tyson asked him, you know, what happened to you to make you think that you can comment on somebody's somebody else's life? Um, I thought that it was a real good conversation. And I'm not even this segment of letter shit is not really even to talk about Boosie and the all of the crazy fucked up shit that Boosie has done or Boosie has said. I wanted to point out the fact that I felt like Boosie was really well mannered. Um, I feel like Mike Tyson, like he seemed like he had a respect for Mike Tyson that he didn't have for other people that he has talked to. Did you get that same sense? Yeah, with I mean, Boosie? Like, you was, probably watch way more Boosie interviews than me. Was, so I mean, it was just some OG shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, it was just yeah. like, uh, that's the reality of it. Like Boosie, I mean Boosie is a fan. Like Boosie grew up on Mike and he's even said like he was like He's like, Mike, man, I remember when he's like, my daddy was, he's like, my daddy, who's his father's passed away now, he got killed in the streets, but, um, who actually went to school with my pops, which is wild. Um, super fucking wild, but, um, saw a small circle, obviously it's a small town, but, um, 
but his pops got killed in the streets. He was like a wild nigga in the streets and shit. And, um, but he was like, I remember my dad betting on you. And he said the money that he, he won off, off one of your fights. I think it was the, uh, I forgot who, what fight it was. He was like, but I remember when my daddy won that, 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 that bet, he bought us a TV. You know what I'm saying? So like you, like you, like that alone is a, a memory of Mike. Like Mike got us a TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he just, he was going to be revered with Mike regardless. You know what I'm saying? And Mike, is the baddest man on the fucking planet, even at fucking damn near 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? Niggas still fear him regardless. Like, motherfucker, you know what I'm Mike saying? Mike Tyson so, will um, literally just, eat your face off. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Mike done lived it. Mike done been to prison. Mike done had millions and millions of dollars and had the world in his fucking palm and lost it all and got it back. And you know what I'm saying? Been to prison just like Boosie and shit. You know what I'm saying? For, for an extended amount of time. So, like, you, you know, I mean, everybody gonna be humble in front of somebody. That's just the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you going and especially when somebody that you revered and you looked up to and you grew up, you know, looking at and shit and you hold a special place in their they heart because of, you know, you got a TV. Y'all ain't had no fucking TV and your daddy got y'all a TV on the strength of that. So, um, you know, you know, I, I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, I feel like men, well, I'll say black men, um, have this, uh, you know, they have, they have this respect for who they call the, the, the OG, kind of like this one stop shop, like this guy that they listen to or, you know, about most things. You know what I'm saying? Like if this particular guy says, like, do you have like an OG like that you listen to? Mm. Not a select, I'm talking about a real OG in your life, I mean, like somebody that you respect to, so much. But, uh, I'm doing pretty more i'm yeah i mean nah, i listen to anybody like, i listen to i've said that several times like i listen to people that have been here longer than me like through their trial and error like i may know more about certain things but they've lived here longer in certain aspects so i'll take advice from anybody but it's what i do with it you know what i'm saying like i probably but it's it's more sort of respect like of the og because you'll hear niggas say like you know that's the og or this nigga ain't got no OG. That's why he act this way or, you know, whatever. I mean, the case I say to I mean, I'm just like a, a wise particular dude, like, So figure? I listen to people, you know what I'm saying? I listen to all <laughs> Okay, humble as well. So like, you know what I mean? Like I listen to all type of like advice and, you know, and I've, I've been around them, but older people all my life, you know what I'm saying? Like most of my friends and shit, like, you know, like I got older brothers. I mean, dudes that I consider like older brothers and shit that's been in my life since I was five and shit. And, you know, like I, I take their advice. Like I just had this conversation the other day, like uh, on Saturday at four in the morning in the middle of the fucking street, drunk as hell. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, like my, my best friend, his older brother who you met, um, like he, he made us tough. You know what I'm saying? He made my best friend tough who in turn made me tougher, like being around him all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like it was, you know, and, and you know, we've, gone our different ways in life in terms of our finances but i still like listen to him you know what i'm saying like he's still my nigga like and he's older than me you know what i'm saying so i always like first nigga one of the first people i smoke weed with type shit you know what i'm saying like just certain shit it's just that's like wow you know what i'm saying so it's like type shit you know what i'm saying i don't know it's kind of hard to explain you know what like as a female i i don't feel like myself or other females have or have talked about having this particular person, like this one-stop shop where you go to like for advice and, and, and things of that nature. Me personally, I uh, feel like everybody has expertise in different things. So I kind of go to, depending on what the issue is, I'll go to who I feel like um, is an expert or, you know, has uh something if i need advice and most of the time it's, it's not even personal advice because i don't go to people for personal advice a lot um but you know it, it i i can't think of anyone not even like i can't even think of like one female that i would go to like oh they know it all or and it's not like a disrespect thing it's it's just like I, I I don't I I feel like guys talk about that a lot, and I'm just like, is there a female equivalent to the OG per se? Like, who do you go to? And I and I, I was thinking about this when I was uh p- putting the production sheets together for this show, and I was just like, I don't think I had nothing like that. And I'm trying to think of like other females that I know d- have they ever spoke of this particular person i mean i feel like everyone goes to their mom 
for certain shit, but mom human too. Like she knows some shit. She might not know some shit, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But I, I, I thought that it was super dope that Mike Tyson was able to tame Boosie. Boosie is on my top list of ignorant niggas. Adrian Broner is on that list as well. It's a lot of them. The list gets longer and longer and it's longer. Not, um, I've watched a bunch of those Mike episodes. It's not a lot of people that step out and step out of line with Mike. <laughs> like it's only been one person yeah. I've seen like somewhat like get their shit off, and that was Dame Dash. And like Dame Dash was like Dame Dash himself. Like he's Dame Dash is is unapologetically him. And like even in his, yeah. his, like conversation with Mike, he like nah, fuck out of here, Mike. He was like saying like you know what I'm saying. Like he was keeping that shit like a, yeah himself. You know what I'm saying. But other than that, like I done seen a lot of niggas go up there and shit and. You know, it's just, it's Mike is just an intimidating presence, man. And you know, he'll tear your goddamn head off, like, to this fucking day. So it's, you know, I mean, you kind of watch what you say and shit. So, I mean, I, like I said, I've seen all I the think like, this... former gangsters, like, niggas that used to run with fucking, um. Cause Mike is a fucking animal, my nigga. Like, you don't want to fuck with Mike. Who want to fuck saying, with Mike? Like, that's, Ain't that's nobody about to fuck with Mike. You have to Mike's shoot Mike. Intelligent, though. Like, that's the thing. Like, Mike is. Super, I've learned that. that. Super fucking when intelligent. I heard that. That's what made me actually, I was like, oh, I might check this podcast out because I'm loving the evolution of Mike fucking Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is one of the greatest based people Based on of a couple time. things like, He's that one of the most I've complex seen. and most just great people of all fucking time. Like, he's, he knows fucking, every, like, he, his history, like, his, his, like, knowledge on history and just, like, I'm talking about, like, from, like, he knows everything about war. Like when I say everything about fucking, I'm talking about every goddamn thing. Like from the beginning of fucking war, like he knows Roman goddesses and God's of war and all. Like he prays to the god. It's, man, that motherfucker is. He is so <laughs> that nigga. Like you don't have demons, nigga. That I got demons. onion, bro. Like, <laughs> he's like a you ain't bought the onion. demons out like of for just the onion. I nigga got layers and layers and layers, and he's got some of the best stories. Um, and he just he's he I just fucking it. nuts. I love Mike. I listen. I've been listening to Mike podcast for like three or four years and shit. So. Well, probably two years. I, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that, um, he even had a podcast until this situation. I didn't know, but I am, I um, definitely sent you his podcast I am before. totally, I am totally interested. You, you talk about Mike Tyson Absolutely. podcast? Oh, must went over my head. Um, but yeah, well, I'm interested now. I may or may not check it out, but, um, I think that, I think that it was, it was, it was super dope. And, you know, I just find it weird how obsessed black men are with other men's sexuality. Like, mind your fucking business. Like, like, black homophobic men are like the Karens of sexuality. Like, mind your business. It, it don't have shit to do with you. It's not your business. Where about who you fucking? Like, Dave East posted some shit about Lil Nas X dressing up as Nicki Minaj. And he had all this shit to say. And you know I think Dave East is fine. And I'm just like, nigga, stop being so fucking whack. Like, why are you so obsessed with this nigga minding his fucking business like mind your fucking business i just hate people who always in other motherfuckers business so adamantly like they hate it like why do you hate that this man is happy this man wants to dress up like Nicki minaj this man has already said that he's gay we already know that this man is a bar it's a whole civil war pending it's an election it's covid it's uh <laughs> it's motherfucking <laughs> fucking uh climate issues going on it's a lot of shit going on Dave he's like why are you worried about this I just hate it because it just seems like at a, at a certain point in time like everybody gonna just say some dumb ass shit and it it exposes people you know what I'm saying like I don't understand why someone else's sexuality makes you so uncomfortable they don't run in the same circles why Be, give me some insight I don't understand no, I don't I don't understand. I, I don't understand the obsession. I'm not sure we are. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. I, I feel like that shit is whack. Um, but I was so happy with Mike Tyson leveling Bootsy out and kind of putting him in his place. Bootsy has, um, I don't know. Are you following Bootsy's new, uh, Instagram mm -hmm. that he got after Mark Zuckerberg, uh, kicked yeah. him off? Oh, is he back at it? He got his followers back mm, up? Nah, he had like 10 million followers. He's probably like a, a million or some shit. No shit. Uh, Mike Tyson, Boosie, 
Hot Boxing Podcast. Uh, it was great. Shit. Check it out. It's a good podcast. He had a good episode with um, Sugar Ray Leonard. That's amazing. Uh, where like he he start crying and shit, and it's like Mike is a monster, bro. Like he's a monster. I think I talked about that episode on this particular podcast, as a matter of fact. But he got an episode with Jim Gray, who's a, a acclaimed boxing announcer and shit, and they got stories for days. Like Mike is, he's just he's just he's he's been so he's so traveled and like been on been on top since he was fucking twenty. So like he, the stories he has and shit, fucking amazing, man. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Um, I think that it is lit. Um, I like seeing people put in their place. So shout out to Mike. So LL Cool um, J shout out for- it was really, really good. Like LL Cool J is a smart motherfucker too, my nigga. Like it's amazing. Like, like that's the that's the beauty of podcasts. Like, cause I've really been able to see like who actually is like who is who. You know what I'm saying? Because people get a chance to talk more often and shit. And uh, him and LL like. Him and LL got a crazy interview. That shit like two and a half hours long, but that shit is so much jewels dropped in between that shit between them two. And uh, obviously they're fucking two of the greatest of all time and they grew up together and shit. That shit is great. It's amazing. Awesome. All right. You ready to give out some advice yeah. real quick? We're about to go into Ain't Shit in Two Cents. Ain't Shit in Two Cents is our listening to this segment uh, where we give out advice to people who clearly don't care about taking advice from unlicensed uh, marijuana smokers (laughs) and drinkers. Uh, Today's letter uh, comes from Melinda in the Middle is what she's calling herself. And this actually came about a week and a half ago, um, almost two weeks ago. So, sorry about that. Hopefully, this is still your issue, Melinda. Um, It says, hello, extra O's, fresh and be healed. Family issue, I need some advice on. Hope you all can, hope you all can give me some of that A1 free therapy. We will try, Melinda. She says, my brother borrowed $2,000 from my mom to get out of some shit involving parking tickets and fines. Uh, this was almost two years ago. My mom asked for the money several times, despite being fresh to death, whining and dining multiple women, showing off on the gram. My brother claims that he is broke. Uh, he has given my mom about $150 of the $2,000. He claims my mom is not hurting for money. So she needs to get off his back and chill. Although my mom is not hurting, quote unquote, for money, it's the prince. My mom is very principle driven. In May, my mom's sister passed away from COVID. In her will, she left my mom money and also my brother and I ten thousand dollars a piece. Um, I got my ten thousand dollars and my Brother got $8,000. When I asked my mom why my brother got $8,000, she told me that it was because my brother owed her money and to mind my business. <laughs> my brother, hold on. My brother has no idea that he was supposed to get 10000 and receive the eight k and he was fine with that. I feel kind of bad holding this info from my brother. I feel like my mother kind of stole this money. However, he did owe it to her. What should I do? Should I tell my brother or should I shut the fuck up and mind my business as my mom declared me to? And this is from Melinda in the middle. Uh, the latter? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> mind yeah, your mind fucking your business. business. Like, he owe her money. Like, she garnished his fucking wages. Like, if you get a lump sum of money right. from the feds and you still owe taxes, them niggas is garnishing your fucking wages if you don't pay in a certain amount of time. So, Nah, hell no. Nah. And she got fucking. Right. That's an executive decision. Like, she was the executor of that estate anyway. Like, she didn't have to give you shit, technically. I mean, she did. That's not true. But, yeah, nah, fuck that. That was her sister, and you owe her money? Nah, you did. Like, and you still getting eight racks. You good? Yeah. <laughs> Very true. When I read this B, I was thinking, like, the same thing. I was like, she put a lien against yeah, your shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm getting my fucking money. Like you need to mind your fucking business because you know your brother was wrong for not paying your mom anyway. Right. Based on the shit that you said, kind of actually going back to like the Adrian Broner shit. Like set up a payment plan, do something. It's your mom, so she probably go as long as you giving her something. You, she probably gonna be right. good. 
but you know i always so i have a problem as well with people who will owe money but be showing off and shit right you broke as hell but you showing off all the time like you can't show off like i always i always clown my own brother because i'll be like bro like you sit around and you act like you rich and you talk all this rich talk and then when somebody come up you're like oh i ain't got it i ain't got it I was like, bro, you can't do both. If you want to be low about your money, you can, but you can't go around and be like, yeah, I'm so rich. I can do this. I can do that. And then somebody like, oh, let me get, or you should do, or whatever, whatever. And he like, oh, nah, like, I ain't got it. Like, da, da, da. So I really don't know, like, from my own family standpoint, do he have it or not? Yeah, well, that's but you just about. can't go around doing both. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> right. He also has a lot of fucking kids. You said what? Yeah, he, did, uh, he got like, what, six kids? My brother has five plus. His girlfriend has a yeah, son. Yeah, so six kids. But he has five children. Yeah, he has five children of his own. And so basically six, like six yeah, fucking kids. You know, basically. You know what I'm saying? When he's going to get food, he ain't getting five niggas food. He's getting six motherfuckers food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are right. You are That's right. Fact. You I are 100% right on that, man. Hey, you are God 100% him, right. I got, I got three. <laughs> I got, I'm all right, all right. And that shit's still a lot. Listen, happy birthday to my twin nieces. Oh my God. They are so fucking oh, yeah, cute. Birthday. Dimples kill me. They're so fucking cute. They had their birthday like two weeks ago. That's actually why I went home for their first birthday. Um, shout out to my twin nieces. Also, um, happy birthday to my oldest niece, which is just crazy to me because she's my first child. She's my first niece. She's 15 years old. I don't know what to do. She comes down the stairs. She's, fucking got on fucking uh Ethica fucking shorts and a bra top and you know how you look at your your family members like no like you get pissed off because they have all of this body so you know that that means predators like I was looking at my niece come down the stairs and I got pissed off like yo like oh my god like you're 15 like and you these kids eating different like <laughs> these kids built different but I was like, well, shout out to my niece, man. Shout out to, shout out to my oldest niece. Also, um, happy birthday to my homie Jada twins, Izzy and PJ. They turned oh, two. Yeah. Happy birthday. Um, I call them my first set of twins. So happy birthday to y'all. Um, but back to this letter. Um, that's your mama business and your brother business. So mind your fucking business. You're not obligated to tell your brother shit. And at the end of the day, he did in fact owe your mama. So it's not like she stole it. She got it how she could. Period. Any additional advice for Melinda in the middle? All right, Melinda, let us know. Hopefully, you know, we got to you in time to give you this advice. Let us know how it worked out. If you took out, took the advice, if you did something before we got to it. Let's wrap this shit. Uh, oh, let me make sure I wrap this up because I'll be forgetting to. If you want some advice from us, write into the ain't shit show at gmail.com and your letter may get read on the show. All right. We're about to wrap this up with some quick free smoke, free smoke. Um, and free smoke is where we talk about any hot button issues, personal topics, anything politics, depending. And today's topic is. Nuck if you buck. We were just talking about kids, right, B? You have kids. We've been children before. Children are growing up so fucking fast. And I had a, a conversation with a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, uh, a couple of days ago. And she was distraught because her son bucked at her. How old is he? And he is 11 years old. Do I know this friend? Oh. No, I don't think so. Um, but he bucked at her and she was upset. She was highly upset. Granted, she beat his ass, which she should. I already told her I'm pro fucking kids up. Fuck his ass up. Um, he, he's a big boy. He's going to be a big boy. So you got to shut that shit down. <laughs> you got to shut that shit down. But I also advised her like, don't take it personal. Because I feel like everyone does that at some point in time. We've all felt like our parents was full of shit at some point in time. Although I feel like 11 was a little bit early yeah, nah. uh, for that. 11 is a little bit early for that. Cause for me, it was, it was in my teens, but that's what I kind of wanted to talk about. Uh, like 
when was the first time like you buffed at one of your parents? Like whatever that means. Like you grabbed the belt, you pushed them off, you balled up your fist, like something where you was like, not today. Uh, Did that ever happen mom, to you? Like, I remember like I, she told me to hold some flowers or some shit. I was in daycare. I was probably I was maybe my kid's age. Like, daycare. Second or third grade. Um I know, I mean it was after school <laughs> at a daycare. Um, she came to pick me up and shit, and she was like, "Holy flowers!" I was like, "No, I ain't holy flowers." And like, I was mad. People in the lobby and shit. She was like, "What the fuck?" And <laughs> looked at me and shit. Right. I, was like, I was like, "Yeah, I said I ain't holding these flowers." I remember that shit clear as fucking day to this day. Ah! And she was like, "Oh, all right, cool." You she always like, remember cool, that cool. shit, no doubt. And she was like, "All right," and then I was like, "That didn't go how I was expecting." Like, I thought she was gonna go ahead and buy. Right. We got in the car and shit. I'm trying to be all like, "So, mom, how was your day?" And she was like. <laughs> It was real good. And like she was like, yeah, it was it was good. She was one word answering me like women do and shit. And <laughs> got to the crib, she told my ass up. As soon as I got upstairs, she was like, Yeah, go ahead and take your clothes off. I was like, Why? How old were you? Like second or third grade, some shit like that. I don't know. Second of, that is early. I, mean, I, mean, I didn't do it. It took a while to until I did it later on to any point later on to that. What 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 happened? What what was the next time you remember that? Like later on in your life? I don't even know. Or did it ever happen? Nah, I used to buck a lot because I I don't know. I just got a bad attitude. Oh so wow! Not like a lot, but like I just got a smart ass mouth, and um, so I would always say like little smart snide ass comments and shit. So I don't know. I mean, I used to get slapped all the time. I don't know. I can't remember like pinpointing. Well, look, I'm the oldest, so I used to I used to get smacked all the time. Like. Talk to my mom. She will deny everything because mothers try to rewrite history like fuck. Uh, <laughs> but my mom used to smack me all the time. I was the oldest of four, right? But I remember exactly. I remember when I booked at my mom and I remember when I booked at my dad. And I was probably about 14 or 15 when I booked at my mom. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember me like Telling her what she wasn't going to do or put her hands on me or something like that. I remember just getting out of line. Um, but my mom was very hard on me. Like, I feel like my mom was very hard on me. One, because I was the oldest of four. So not only do I got to be the big sister, I got to be like mom number two and shit. And I ain't got time for that shit. And so like when I was 14, I remember going off on my mom. My mom jumped on me. Like my mom literally jumped on me. I remember being on the floor, like in our living room and my mom was beating the shit out of me. And it's funny because I had the conversation with my sister. We were talking about something else. And my sister was like, yo, like I remember when mom jumped on you that one time. She was like, we didn't know if we was going to have to jump in it. <laughs> like, like my mom jumped on my ass. Like she jumped on Child me. Abuse. I don't remember what I said or how I said, but my mom jumped on me. And my mom was like, don't you ever fucking da 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 doing all that shit. And then I remember with my dad. And I remember exactly because, you know, I'm 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 the oldest and I'm the girl. So I'm I'm daddy's girl. And I'm grandma's baby because I'm the first grandchild. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my brother is my, is my mom's child. I always say, I'm my mom's child now. She appreciated me after right. I was gone and shit. <laughs> but it was my brother, her only boy. So whatever. But I remember my father, I was pissed with my dad because I was like 16. And honestly, my brother is three years younger than me and he always got to do more shit than me. Mm. So I remember my dad telling me some shit like, I couldn't go out like like I had to be in at a certain time and I wasn't feeling that shit. And I was like, and my dad, he rarely like my dad rarely disciplined me. But that time I remember I said so I don't remember exactly what I said to my dad, but I remember him grabbing me. And although he didn't like put like, you know, he didn't beat my ass like it was one of them grabs like, bitch, don't get shit twisted because I will fuck you up. out here. And then the way that he grabbed me in the veracity in which he grabbed me like that shit scared the fuck out of me. So like I it, we was all good from there. But like I told her, like, I feel like everyone, do, every child does it. 
at a certain point it sounded like she, you know she was so heartbroken by it i was like it's not personal one is puberty that's happening <laughs> like my man got more testosterone than he's used to having like he's a big boy you know what i mean like he didn't like the fact that she she told him to turn off the tv and do his fucking work or something like that um, but she said she'd be his ass. Do you feel like, uh, which one of your kids you think would be the first to pop Man, off? Just... Bubba? Yeah, Bubba. Me, he, well, he already, what, like, he already, like, got, like, anger issues and shit. That'd be work. We'd be having to work on it because he gets, like, super mad, like, ferocious. Like, he just, like, it just gets so goddamn mad. And so, me and him, them, me really? and him be fighting all the time. Like, <laughs> like he's like a little pit and shit. Like once he start, like you grab his like fucking in his mouth and shit, and like be fucking with him, he just goes fucking nuts. Like we go at it all the time. Like I, I go with that. Go at it. Like that's my little nigga shit. But we go at it. Like I can tell. Like even from when he was like a baby, like he would always like just kind of be bucking and shit. And like I'm like, oh. And I told my old lady like, like this nigga gonna try me when I get old. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Like for real, I can already tell. Like and I'm gonna uh, fuck his ass up. Like straight up. <laughs> Why are you making nah, plans to fuck know, your like, baby up? That's I mean, so funny. I know, like, cause I, I man, I've <laughs> been, yeah, it's, I've had quite a few incidents. Not quite a few. That's not, like, I probably had like three or four incidents with my parents and shit, like one way or another and shit, like between like yelling matches yeah. and like me and my dad, like squared off one time and shit one time. Like, it was crazy, but, um, like, like you nah, fought? Nah, was about to though. I like, I stood up to him, but he wasn't scared. So I was like, well, shit, I'm about to go. <laughs> <laughs> You thought you was gonna scare your dad. He was up for yeah, the fucking challenge. Yeah, he's small, like he like five nine and shit. That nigga want his nigga. He's, Where did you get your hike from? He's my stepdad, ain't my real dad. Um, oh, got you, got you. But got you, got yeah, you. so fucking um, yeah, that shit was. A, oh, did you ever pull the "you not my dad" type shit? With um, him? when you know. got pissed I, off, probably. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think I did that shit to my mom. Like, not with him around necessarily, but like, I'm like, yo, you picking him over me type shit? Like, I'm your fucking son. That ain't gotcha. my fucking dad. You know what I mean? Like, type shit, but I don't know. Yeah. This again, deep seated issues that I got with my whole family and shit. Gotcha. So I'm not getting into that shit today. What, what age, what was the epitome of the age where you felt like you knew it all? Uh, like 16, 17. Like, which age were you just? Oh, 16 to, yeah. 16 to 20. Like that whole span of time, it was like about four years for me. You know what? I might be willing to agree with you with that. Like nah, seriously, 16, I feel 20, like there 21, was maybe even twenty two was a very pivotal time in a young black man and a young black person, but specifically a black man because like we have so many, like it's so much uh, that we have to like prepare for. Right? We gotta prepare. Like if you a street nigga, you gotta prepare for the streets. If you like, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta like, or even the temptation of the streets. Cause like, especially in our time, like everybody was selling dope and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially where I was from, like all the niggas I was around weren't like being very productive and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then like, I was listening to a lot of music that was not in my mind influential, but in fact, it was very impactful because a lot of that shit was, you know, hustling and doing this and weed and all that shit. So, and then I was around niggas that was doing it. So it all kind of just coincided. So it's like the temptations and the allure of like being bad and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just very, it's, it's very, uh, present in, in, in that time frame. looking back for me. And even now, mm -hmm. like I got a lot of nephews yeah. and a lot of younger dudes that I like kick it with and shit that I could tell, like, like you don't really got to be selling bud or you don't really be having to need that strap, but in their mind, they feel like they oh, do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard for me to say, don't do it when I did it, but at the same time, like, I can tell you don't do it because I did it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I understand sometimes. Hold it that so you don't have yeah, to Yeah, but it's, I mean, that. but life is all about experience. Like, some motherfucker can talk to you in the That's face. That's like, very true. You very well can see, like, motherfucker can tell you, you know what I'm saying, twice over that the fucking stove is hot. Sometimes you just gotta touch the fucking stove. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing is, the, nothing, nothing can be taught like life like life is the greatest teacher of all so it's kind of difficult to like yeah i tell you like for me me and my old lady was talking like in terms of parent and, and even my um even my best friend who my nephew who you met like he going through some turmoil in his life you know what i'm saying he's at that 19 20 year old age where yeah. like he trying to figure it out like you know what i'm saying like he be thugging a little bit and trying to get some little money on the side and shit like that and i'd be trying to tell him like yo you don't want to do that continue to go to school but again you yeah. gotta live your own life and then we, you uh, uh, unfortunately you're a product for your environment and shit like that so 
And, um, you know, so like the thing as far as parenting for me, um, and that I tried that I'm going to try to incorporate and instill in my kids that I'm trying to do it now, but they still eight and four. So, I mean, almost eight and four. So it's still yeah. not, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you know, kind of that tricky or whatever. But in terms of like good parenting for me, I think like the best thing I can do is give my kids enough game. Like, cause I can't give them every scenario that they're going to be faced with, but enough game in right. order to, when they're faced with some scenarios that they've never dealt with before, that even if I haven't given them the exact scenario or, or given a play by play on that particular scenario, they get, they have enough game that I've given them to make the best decision that they think is the best for them at that particular time. Like hear my voice or hear your mom's voice or hear somebody that's in like, that's helped raise you. That, that means you well. Hear something that they said, maybe not specifically to this, but some type of, you know, something relatively close that like, all right, boom, I heard my dad sound to tell me something like that. Or I heard my daddy or my mama say X, Y and Z. Maybe I should chill or, you know what I'm saying? So that's I think that's what yeah. good parenting is, because we can't live our kids lives. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to do that because right. that's their life. But uh, I right. want to give them enough game to be able to to make to to hope that they make the best decisions, like when they're faced with something that they're that you know they have to make a decision on that could shape their life because every choice has an invoice you know what i'm saying like right everyone so um you know that's no that's pretty much living uh, and and it's yeah. in itself and, and trying to parent and shit you know what you know when when you're trying to see like for me i have you know, you have your children, you're there, you're there to mold them and shape them and, and shit like that. And then, like, for me, I'm trying to, you know what I mean, like, tell my nieces shit, like, listen. You know what I mean? But they don't want to listen. You know what I mean? Like, they just, like, because I'm not there every day. That's why I tell, like, my brother and sister, like, you know, you need to be telling them, you need to reinforce you know, these things. And I feel like they don't reinforce it. So my whole thing is, I'm not trying to keep you from your experiences, but what I'm trying to do is keep you out of situations that can seriously alter yeah. your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you're going to do shit. You know what I mean? I know it's shit we all did. You know what I'm saying? I know you're going to have sex. I know you're going to smoke some weed. I hope, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm hoping is you ain't trying no coke. <laughs> like you ain't trying no crack. You ain't trying no man-made shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to give you shit like that because, listen, I see people that is on fucking crack in 2020. How you grew up in the fucking 80s and 90s and saw that shit and you are fucking 30 plus years old, 40 plus years old on crack? Yeah. How does that occur? You know what I mean? Like, and then it's always that same shit of almost kind of the argument of like the gateway drug and things like that. But I just say that because I'm just like, damn, like being a parent and raising your kids and then your kids don't appreciate the shit that you're trying to get to them. Right. And at what age were you when the shit your parents was trying to get you to do started to make sense? Um, we just like, I know why they did that. I know why. Mom I mean, did it's that. crazy because like all I the know. things that I used to do, like was a byproduct, like, you know, outside of, you know, all the fuck shit, like the, the, the street shit that I was doing, but I was, I always had a job. I always like, that's what honestly kept me out of trouble a lot of the times because I always had a job. Um, and I always mm -hmm. had like a work ethic that was instilled by my parents early on. So I think like, um, you know, I mean, and, and they would tell me like certain things and shit, like you need to get a job, you need to do something, you need to be more productive. But at the same time, I was like real self-determined. And I'd really like, it's funny because I was out of the house at like 18, like really at like 17, but like 18, like the day I graduated from high school, like I ain't, I won't at the crib. Like I was out, you know what I mean? So. I was kind of on my own, like, you know, for real, for like, I ain't, nobody's ever given me shit since I was 17 years old. Like, and that's a fact, like nobody ever, like everything I got was earned, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and it's kind of hard to say because like, you know, shit, it, I mean, y'all did a good job in terms of like what y'all did, but like we had a lot of discrepancies upon, uh, you know, upon uh, mm -hmm. along those late teenage years and, you know what I mean? Early twenties and shit. But, um, I mean, as far as like, I don't know, I can't really pinpoint like a specific 
time in my life where like I just started making the changes because like I just was doing my own thing. You know what I'm saying? And like I would take heat, I guess, but what, I was figuring time, shit out on my own. For real, for real. What point in time did you look back on it? Like in hindsight, like now like it makes sense now. Like I understand it. I understand either not that you went in the direction in which they I were mean, trying to get you to go. You understood why they were trying to get you to do these things. I don't know that you thought was an inconvenience or, you know, just as a, like, I remember, like for me, like I always used to be upset because I felt like I was treated differently. Like I just said, like, I felt like I was treated differently from my brother. Like I felt like there were less expectations of my brother, you know what I'm saying? And I was put on this, you know what I'm saying? I was in everything. I had to bring home straight age. I played all the sports. I was in all the clubs. Like I did all that shit. And that was kind of just like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? But like my brother, he might bring home a C and we having a party. <laughs> like, yay, nigga, you're making it. But at, when I got older and I was able to look at my life and look at my discipline and these the things that they made me do, it all helped me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm able to live the life that I live. That's why I'm able to do the job that I do. That's why I, you know what I'm saying? I've played on teams. I've done things like that. I work well in groups. I, I have good groups of friends. Like, everything just starts to come together. And so I was just like, you know, I'm appreciative because if they were probably more lenient with me, I might be like somebody, you know, that I went to high school with that, you know what I'm saying? That ain't really doing much different from high school you know what i'm saying because shit like that happens so i mean i guess for me it was it, it it was probably in my late 20s when i started to realize like it all came together and like my parents being like a pain in my ass was like that like but um what do you appreciate most and we're gonna wrap this up what do you appreciate the most about your raising and your upbringing. Uh, I mean, I had a great, I had a, I ain't want for, I ain't need for shit. You know what I'm saying? Until like my mom got sick with MS when I was like 17. So that, you know, threw an f- extreme huge monkey wrench in the game. But up until that point, like I, my, just my, you know, living, I had a great life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I never wanted for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I didn't travel as much as I like looking back like that. I think, you know, maybe my, I I plan to do with my kids, like taking more places and shit. But other than that, like I never wanted for nothing. Like I never was fucked up in fucked up positions. It was always stable. It was always loving. Like my wife's upbringing was nowhere near like to par, you know what I'm saying? As it should be. And I know a lot of people that didn't, I know a lot of people that did have good childhoods, but I know a lot of niggas who didn't. So I'm much appreciative that I had a, a stable house, you know what I'm saying? I never want no lights off, none of that fucking water and shit. Never had to live, you know, like move in the middle of the night or no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it was never none of that. So I was privileged in that regard. Um, and you know, for what it's worth, it, you know, it was a loving environment. So, um, it's just, you know, once, once shit, you know, a life event happened in my life, it altered it significantly for everybody and nobody was really prepared for it. So, uh, that shit just kind of shaped and molded some, holy, some, some shit that we didn't, we didn't have any, we weren't prepared for, you know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Yeah. And, you know, it drove a wedge for what it was, but you know, things come back together. But in terms of my actual childhood and like in my upbringing, it was great. I had a, like, I have no issues at yeah. all, like that I can think of, you know what I'm saying? So I'm appreciative of just that, like having everything I needed emotionally and, you know, physically and shit and mentally, I guess. That's what's up. That's what's up. I think for me, it is, um, I love the way my family loves family. Mm -hmm. Like, I like that, even though sometimes it can put people in a position to just be all up in your business. But my family, they have a good time. You know what I'm saying? They have like a genuine, like they love being family. And I love that. And um, everybody always like, like every individual member of my immediate family, I feel like people are like drawn to them. And then when we all come together, it's like motherfucking transformers and shit. Like, 
and everybody loves my family. Like our family has so many people. Like when I come home, like it's so many people that want to come see me or pre COVID that would come to see me. Like just having a good time. And I love that, like that genuine good vibe. And you know, you know, my childhood had things. It had trials. It had tribulations. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't, it, it was, not the worst childhood at all. I think I had a decent childhood, but there were, you know, things that occurred in my childhood. And I just feel like as a family, we be able to push through really anything. You know what I mean? Like we always gonna laugh, bro. That That's going to happen. We going to laugh. I don't care what's going on. I don't care who funeral we at. Like, I don't care. Like once we finish crying, we about to laugh. That's just what we about to do. And majority of my family is like that. So I think that's what I appreciate um, the most about my upbringing. And, you know, my dad organizing fucking cookouts all the time and shit like that. I feel like people don't have cookouts like they used to. People still have a cookout in North Carolina. No, not right now. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah, yeah. in general. This is South. Oh, okay. Like, I'm always, I'm always have a cookout. <laughs> I'm in the South too. Nigga, you don't know you nobody. Like you be with South. people that don't live there. I mean, they're more ruder. You know, what I mean? I'm sure if you knew people that live there, <laughs> you're right. I only have, I only have, I only have three friends who are from here. Nobody's from right. here. Well, not people I run into. They probably don't be in the place I've been. However. You guys, thank you. Thank you for listening to us. Make sure y'all subscribe to the show, man. Check us out at the ancient show.com. That's the X where the I would be. And follow us on social. Listen to us on all your favorite platforms and tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, y'all know I like to end this podcast with a quote. And today's quote is if God doesn't fix the situation, that he is using the situation to fix you. And until next week, I want y'all to wear a mask, be safe, manifest your destiny, stay out the way while this election stuff is going on, uh, and the marathon continues. Peace. And we out. Peace.